Alex, man. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on. No, oh, thank you for, for coming on. Um, man, I've been an admirer of your, your artwork for a very long time. And um uh, been watching your uh your talks on on YouTube, um following all your social media. Um just really inspirational. Um, I, man, I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I likewise, right back at you, man. Your work is uh, prolific. Your paintings and it, it's it's really something very unique. Great sense for for color, but uh, your your narrative, your storytelling, and your and your pieces is something uh, I've been inspired by as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, I think that's something that you do so well in your work, um, and. From I'm gonna I'm gonna just give you a bunch of compliments right now to get it out of the way. But uh sure, yeah, yeah. Um like you you seem like a very genuine person and like in touch with like like nature and, and what's around you and the way you talk. Um uh you know, I I listen to some of your just like you like out sketching and it's um yeah, it just makes me feel good after. And I'm glad that you do that because, yeah, it's, it's, um, I don't know. I appreciate that, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's actually a, a lot of that is uh, thanks to, uh, to my wife. She, uh, she, uh, jump started that in me to, to want to go out and sketch again. She wanted to learn the art form and, and we would wake up early in the morning we'd go out and we would just draw uh we haven't done that in a bit but it was it was definitely something that started and i haven't stopped i not necessarily that i still go out and draw but i i draw on my own here sketchbooks or whatever but and she's um is she a story artist she she's a she works in story development uh she does story art but it's uh, it's more she she does more of the writing side. She oh, okay. she breaks down stories, character, a little bit of world building. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. So we've we've known each other for quite a few years. Like I remember we were at Disney at the same time, and we'd like see each other at lunch, yeah. and we're like, "Oh, we gotta get lunch mm -hmm. together," and then you would um you'd be in crunch time and then i would be in crunch time so it it never worked out but hey now now we're here and now we get to like finally sit down and talk and finally yeah yeah no it's great it's great i the last time i remember seeing you was at the one of the lightbox expos and that was that that was and that was such, those things are such a blur like they go by so quickly and it feels like they take forever also <laughs> So there's just so much overwhelming uh, uh, things that happen. Yeah. Do you like those big kind of events? Like for me, I I really enjoy them, but then I'm like, that's enough for like two months. Like I don't need to, I can just be away for a while after that. I mean, I mean, to be very honest, I I. I generally don't like to do that stuff. I don't like to go, but when I do end up going, I really enjoy the time. So it's hard to say. Like I have this sort of uh, the first instinct is to to not want to go. I I I always justify it was like I'd rather go somewhere, hike, take a mini vacation, whatever. Cause, cause uh, it does feel exhausting afterwards, but it is pretty fun seeing everybody and, and talking and even uh, helping out people. If, if they ask me to do stuff like that, talks or portfolio reviews or, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's a mixed bag. I think yeah a lot of artists are kind of like that we get we get used to um 
you know, being in our own, in our own space. And sometimes we need like a, like a kick to, to get out and do something really social. Um, I'm kind of, yeah, I like it. I like it once in a while. Um, but if it's too much, then it, it forces me, I, I end up becoming like really antisocial for a long time <laughs> where like, I don't want to respond to emails or anything for just like weeks. That's yeah, that's true, man. I, I never thought about the aftermath, the after, like the after effect of, of some of events like that. But that's true. I, I do feel the same. Like, oh my God, enough. I I want to be alone. <laughs> Isolate myself. <laughs> that's that's very true. Never thought about it like that. Yeah. Huh. Um curious your because I've I've listened to your other podcasts and stuff, and you talk a bit about mm -hmm. your career path. Um, but there's something I'm curious about. Like you went to Art Center and then right. From Art Center, how did you get your first few jobs? Like, what was that path like? Uh, the uh, well, I got my my first few jobs thanks to thanks to friends of mine who who opened opportunities. Ja Jackson being the very first, he he recommended me, and I had a freelance. Uh, freelance gig at a, a game company in Sherman Oaks. Um, well, I'm sorry, not freelance. Um, intern. <laughs> it was paid internship. Nice. And uh, and then they hired me on as as staff for, I was there probably for about a year or two. And, but uh, getting there was, was a, was sort of a, foggy and unknown journey from art center to that point and i didn't know that i was ever gonna get to start and uh yeah th that was my very first job uh, and it was through games and after that job ended i i realized i don't belong in working in games like i just that was my limited mindset back then like yeah i don't i don't think i can do stuff for games it's a different workflow i i think i i need to be in in films in, in doing stuff for movies and uh, uh that's because i was seeing friends of mine uh, do their work and and how, what they get to explore and it's like yeah that's that's where i need to be and um my first start in film was uh, thanks to my uh my friend uh, jared who uh, recommended me at the Aaron sims company and that opened that door it all of these moments in my early career were like opening the doors for me. And then from there on, it was entirely up to my persistence and, and uh, working hard to keep that up. Um, but uh, Art Center, when, when I was going through Art Center, I didn't really, um, I didn't really think about that stuff. I, I was so academic and focused really hard on being better and standing out and you know uh there was this notion of when i was going there you know the the younger uh if if you get to uh be super good while you're still young that's the best or something like it was it was these thoughts that um kept me in this aggressively competitive state of mind and it uh, didn't help much i only i only realized that when i started to actually improve with my work when i felt like i was improving and it's and it's when i was when i let go i didn't care about any of that and i just started to have fun with with 
what I truly loved to do with my uh, with with art and with painting or drawing. So, um, yeah, that's that's super interesting because um, sometimes I'll be on a project and I'm like, OK, I have to do these paintings. And then I start to put like some pressure on myself to do like really good paintings. And then they they're always horrible. So then I have to like step back and be like, not care, just have have fun, just throw ideas down. That, that is exactly, you know, that hap yeah, that's something that always I think stayed with me. I thought it's something that I could uh mature from, but it's not a thing of maturity or immaturity. It's more like a it's just part of a of I guess part of you, part of me, part of other artists as well that it's it's I think I think being in this business in this dynamic industry you can't but help to to have to have a competitive drive to um to stay I don't like using this word to stay relevant just cuz it sounds so fake like relevant i gotta it's it, it sounds so social media -y. oh how do i stay relevant on whatever but i don't i don't uh it's not what i mean it's to stay afloat you know before instagram and all that you you had to kind of um uh, not i i used to say like not get lost in the dust not get lost behind so you, you keep up keep making work and and even when i was unemployed i would you know, uh, generate work for myself, work that I'd be excited about. And, uh, <laughs> um, that, that actually was a thrill because it did get me actual jobs, you know, be thanks to things like CG hub, for example. I mean, it's the only place that I was posting on for, for a while, you know, um, But yeah, uh, how about how about yourself? Do you did you go to Art Center or? No, I went to in upstate New York. There's a technology school. Um, it's it was like an hour away from where I grew up, and they oh, wow. had an illustration program there. So, um, yeah, I went there, studied illustration, and it was more more like editorial or like kids books stuff like that that's kind of like what I was interested in cool. and wow. then um yeah as I got into this world more then I realized like oh concept art is a thing I can work on movies and um yeah so after after that school Rochester Institute of Technology after that um I did all my learning like on schoolism and buying people's gumroad videos and that's, I felt like that's, awesome. that's that's where the real college started when I started yeah yeah on. yeah oh totally totally I mean I did I didn't really I um I I really wanted to have take um a Ryan Church's class back when I was in art center but uh, there wasn't any entertainment track when I was going there at the time so you had to really know the right people and and be uh, close with certain people to so you can get into that class and you also most more importantly you have to actually be good so ryan church can teach you probably with ease i have no idea how it, how it went but i never got in but um yeah after art center i was i remember there was a time when i was taking uh i was going to the workshops after i graduated i was unemployed after art center for for about two, almost three years. And thankfully I was living under a roof and I was living with my parents, and, you know, very grateful for them to this very day. But, um, um, it, I remember Kevin, Kevin Chen, I, I was in his workshop, uh, and I'm, I'm eating breakfast and he sits next to me and he's like, so Alex, uh, 
So what do you want to do with this? What do you want to do with, uh, you, because you're, you're, you're in these workshops all the time and you're practicing figure and, um, I, I want to, want to work in games. It's like games. All right. What, uh, do you have any favorite games? I mentioned a few, uh, I forgot what I mentioned. I think fallout was one of them just because Justin Sweet's paintings were on the uh, loading screen. And that's that was actually my first, if not second, exposure to concept art. I Because I wasn't considering Frank Frazetta as concept art. It wasn't. But, you know, such a influence on the concept art community, whatever you want to call it. And... Uh, I was, uh, he's like, do you have any, uh, do you have any uh, concept artists? I didn't even know Mullins at the time. I was like, yeah, uh, well, just as sweet. And uh, who's that guy that did the books with, with the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> James Gurney. Like that, that was it. And it's like, all right, dude, you gotta, you gotta expand. You gotta, you, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot out there. You know, you can look at the art of Star Wars. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so, so just uninformed. I It just went to show that I was not thinking about my career. I was stuck in this mode of I'm going to be the best figure drawing guy ever. And that really doesn't get you anywhere. I mean, it gets you somewhere for yourself, for your for your knowledge, but uh, in terms of establishing a career, I mean, you, unless you maybe do uh, gallery artwork, I, I, which I have no, I don't know what that's like. So, but um, yeah. So what? Um, so through those conversations, that's how you got more into environments and kind of like keyframes you realize like figures wasn't like you can't just draw figures you gotta like tackle the whole the whole shot um uh, funny enough actually i was i was trying to imitate phil hale and frank frazetta in my paintings when I was learning to paint I never knew I never considered the fact that I was also putting them in a situation even though even the, the environment was just a, a ground plane with a spotlight <laughs> like I had nothing around maybe sometimes a, a red sun or a, or or a moon <laughs> it was very very basic and uh, my my original uh, goal as an artist and this goes back before Art Center was, I wanted to, I wanted to do what Drew Struzan did. I wanted to do movie posters to the quality of Drew Struzan. And I, and I failed with, with fireworks. I never got there. It was a disaster. I tried, I remember getting an airbrush set and I'm like, I'm going to do this. And the, and the first week of trying, I'm like, I'm not going to do this. This is, this is beyond me, man. I can't, I don't know how he does it, how he draws. So I had no idea that part of the technique was you can, project and, and trace and but anyway um uh and you know i think part of the the starting environments and keyframes and all that um was also because uh even before the drew struzan um hype in my mind i was doing animation i was doing stop motion animation i had the equipment uh, and everything um, with the little lunch box and the timer meter and I would build my own sets and, and, and literally make little short clips record them directly to VHS I never paid attention to the fact that I'm creating sets for to, to, to design shapes with light is just whatever felt and looked cool and I was mimicking Arden, uh, Ardman's, you know, Wallace and Gromit stuff. I was, I was basically taking what I grew up with and trying to imitate that. And um, uh, 
yeah, so when I got to the uh, to the point in my life where I started composition and that was I was learning from my father. My father is also an artist, but he he a completely different field. Uh, he does mosaics and it's contemporary mosaics and it's a completely different industry. Uh, but uh, he he's gone through that process of learning academic art and, and he taught me he taught me environment uh, with with graphite on um, on uh, newsprint. Uh, excuse me, one second. Yeah. And um, it was something that one of his mentors had taught him. Where, where you? I'm pretty sure you know this. Where you scribble and you practice with, uh, um, uh, abstract shapes. Uh, you just fill up an entire page and then you crop out little thumbnails and you s sort of try to train your eye to spot balances in composition. So that was my first training. It was, I never really had a composition class or, I mean, I had a Hanna-Barbera perspective book that talked about perspective and, and basics of composition, but not nothing, nothing like what I learned from my father and, and this intuitive play. And um, that, that sort of helped me actually get confident later when I started working in film for storyboarding. Because my first job for Aaron Sims time was I, I storyboarded a commercial for, for it was like, I think it was for tequila. And, and that was it. Or no, 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 it wasn't tequila. I'm sorry. Uh, it was some sort of uh, Indian reservation uh, casino, some, something like that. I, it doesn't matter. But um, that was exciting because I had seen the behind the scenes of Gladiator on, on DVD and, and, and the storyboard artist to that was still is phenomenal. Uh, um, and, and also really Scott himself does his own storyboard. So it, it's that pen and marker method on, on and and I did it on post-it notes because when I was working at the game company Bill Perkins helped out with with doing storyboards at the time on, on something and I, I I was catching glimpses of what he's doing he was doing he's doing it as, as like an art director almost and uh and that inspired me. I'm like, post-it notes, perfect. That's actually brilliant because it's it's the perfect aspect ratio. So I, I took mm -hmm. that and I was I was carrying post-it notes with me. I'm like, I do storyboards. <laughs> I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I was just like trying to, I was trying, I was just trying to 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 as I go speak the language. Um and uh yeah, that got, that got me started. Uh, the the boards and it, it's funny. I didn't get to actually do what I love to do till way way later in my career. I, I I that got me into Aaron Sims, and then it was a matter of learning to photo bash. I was such a purist, you know. And if you can, as you, you can imagine, you know with that mindset of I have to be the best figure drawing artist and the best painter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went, that, that was hard for me because you're like, you got to learn po photo bashing. If you want to be in this industry, you got to learn how to work with photo, just Photoshop. I'm like, yeah, but pen and ink is all I knew. <laughs> Shut up and learn photo. So I did that. Uh, and I feel like I, I, out of the pressure and stress, I, I grasped it pretty quick and I improved on it. And while I was there, I started to see other painters and other concept artists emerge on CG Hub. And I wasn't, I don't think I was posting on CG Hub at the time, but I, I would see uh, 
people that were working at Naughty Dog and, and whatnot, just really power, powerful art. And, and I was reintroducing myself with Craig Mullins' work and, and I was convincing myself that, yeah, all of these guys, they just, they just use photo. That's a photo. That's a photo. Just this, this cocky, in a way, ignorant attitude that I picked up right off the bat uh, that hurt me as well. Uh, and, and that went for a while, that job. And, and when I finished, I don't mean to ramble on, 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 on this journey, but when I finished that, uh, I was unemployed again because, you know, taking a hard look at myself in the mirror, so to speak, my work was not what I thought it was. I was really, it was, it was very, a very inflated, you know, I was, I definitely had improved but it was just bland, uninteresting stuff. Very VFX driven, and to me, it was uninteresting. You know, to to certain clients, it probably is a perfect thing. But I was not happy with what I was doing, and that that was another few years of not having any work, even after trying and trying. You know, small jobs here, like two weeks worth of work with clients here and there for things. But um, I, uh, I, I, it was that point in my life where I, I looked, I turned to just watching movies because I, I was so just isolated i didn't talk to anybody i played video games and that was like a downer downward spiral into wasting my time and i knew it but i was telling myself i, I st i'll still do it i'll do it. putting it off my discipline was just gone and then um i heard friends you know getting uh climbing the ladder higher in the industry and, and getting crazy cool jobs and and that uh, sort of lit a fire under my butt and uh, somehow I just started watching films. I started watching old films that I loved and, and uh, directors. I started listening to their commentaries and I and. I don't know what it was, but there was a moment of clarity for me that made me realize, actually, this is what I love. This is actually what I love. I love these shots. I love these moments in in film. I love how they make movies. I definitely am. I I, I definitely belong in this field, and I can. I know exactly what I need to do. What if? Like I invented this. I told myself like, no one does this. I, <laughs> even though there are so many, but because I, again, I was isolated. I had no contact, no communication with artists. I was like, no one does this. No one does moments, uh, paintings that feel like moments out of a movie. <laughs> There's so many artists that do that, but it got me to practice it got me to to excite myself and get back into it and i because of that fun aspect i gave i i stopped giving a shit about the academic way of painting and drawing and building up an illustration let alone drawing a figure you know there was there was ways there was ways that i learned from mike hernandez there was ways i learned from everybody, you know, uh, Gary Meyer, where you build up from back to front or whatever. You know, I, I love Mike. Mike Hernandez to this day is one of my best painting teachers. I, I, I love his work and, and so is Gary Meyer. Uh, but um, I let go of all of that to just fearlessly attack and try things the way I've learned from the previous industry experiences. I started to photo bash and try to make frames with photos. I didn't feel excited. Well, what would make it feel exciting? What if you only use 
part of the photo? What if you just isolated shapes from the photo, change, mess with the contrast, extract that, and then use use uh, just the soft brush and, and paint into that? And that taught me Photoshop because I I I just because I knew how to paint, I didn't didn't mean I knew how to use Photoshop. But now I'm I, I'm sort of reverse engineering. I'm, I'm walking backwards to to relearn what was always in front of me and um that got me to think like okay i'm making these frames and, it, and it's just it's just uh people back with the backs of their heads and and granted i still do that uh today but it's actually with a more of a driven purpose and a story with in mind but uh, back then I was just trying to imitate shots and they were sloppy, but still more exciting than I ever experienced my work being. And, um, I, I realized I asked my, I started to ask myself questions. What is it about these movies that I was watching? Um, that was so uh, memorable that I, I I would watch these very difficult to sit through films and I loved it because they made me feel something very real, very honest. And I decided to imitate that in my work. And I think that's when I started to um be noticed is simply put i i i don't know how else to, to say it but that's how i got recognized on the internet on cg hub i started to post work like that and it 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 helped me it gave me drive because the response was so positive from other professionals working professionals and that that landed me a freelance job, one of my very first freelance gigs. And it was actually for a live action adaptation um, through Disney. Michael Gracie was, was the director and I was working with Joel Chang and we boarded the entire film in black and white and then in color, uh, Snow White, Snow White and the Huntsman, something like that. I think that was the name. Oh, yeah. It was a uh I think that's what his name. I, I I'm I'm not sure. I don't remember. <clears throat> but it, it was it was taking different cultures uh and and showing their fighting styles is a form of martial art. The, that movie didn't get made. The the Charlize their own version got made. There were several being made at the time, but anyway, and uh, yeah, that was that was really the the spark. I I I had. It's like it's like holding your breath for a really long time after you've after you've been in an airplane, and it, and it's you've crashed deep into the ocean and you're that entire time you're trying to figure out where up is because it's so dark and you're swimming in any given direction and you're almost out of breath and you pass out and you actually do pass out and you have these you have this psychedelic dream and you're not sure if you're alive or not i mean this sounds very <laughs> unrealistic because in a serious situation i think everybody knows what happens in that but and then finally, in that final moment, it's like my head came out on top of the water. And I was like, oh, I, I, I get it now. That's how it felt. That's how it felt. Like I learned how to swim. And that's that's funny that, because that is also an industry term in a way. You know, I was I was also green, but that was, you know, that's part of it. That's part of the nature of it. And um, yeah, it was all just hard work, extremely hard work from there to get to just keep going i i don't 
I've all, I, that's the only thing I've felt uh, the opportunities and the, the great projects that I've got to work on were uh, that was pure pure uh, chance the chance that I got to work on that stuff and, and the uh, recommendations from from friends and but anyway sorry that was a long rant but uh, that was that was amazing man um i i like what you said about when you're when you're painting you're capturing a moment and it's about the feeling um you know it's there's always going to be someone who can render better or uh you know they might have better like technical skills or something like that but what makes you what makes someone stand out is what's the unique thing that they can bring to it it's like what's um what's something that you could take from your experience like how you grew up your travels um these different life experiences you had these maybe maybe you're inspired by this obscure artist or this this painter this cinematographer bringing all that stuff and um with your own experience and creating creating something unique that people can relate to and they get to like almost peer into they get to like see a little bit of your life or who you are as a person um when yeah when people are are asking me like how, how do i get a job how do i stand out um and i i say you've got to find you've got to find that unique thing that you can bring to the table like what is specifically unique to you um and i see that definitely in in your work um I, it's vital it's it's so important especially now yeah. more than ever now and sometimes i feel for you know people that are graduating now and going and it's it must you know i keep thinking to myself it must be incredibly difficult to just get started now but at the same time um it's probably easier because there's so much information about what you need to do is out in the open you can look it up when when i was starting it you really had to ask around and, and dig around <laughs> i mean i think i was at still around the time when i had to print and, and paste and <laughs> create a book the old-fashioned way <laughs> Which was that was I'm so glad when I when I realized when I learned that oh we don't need to print stuff anymore all you just need to do is show your site thank God the first thing I did was give my printer to my parents I didn't it's like oh that was such a pain yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah no it's it's very very um, um it's very important to take time for yourself and and it might be hard you might be living a very difficult life at, at in, in the moment but take time for yourself and and really see what is what's meaningful to you in, in this art because i went through a process of imitating i wanted to work at blizzard you know my first job was a game com uh, game company, but before that, I was fantasizing working with Blizzard because I was addicted to World of Warcraft, and I wanted to do stuff with, you know, guys with swords traveling through thick snow, and, and I was doing paintings like that, and it didn't, it just didn't do anything to me, and people would look at it you know when i look back on that time i remember people looking at that work and being like it's cool but what am i looking at what am i what is you know what's the thing what's supposed to be and i was like really it's a guy he has a sword on his it was very i it was so crushing but later i realized yeah they 
they're not feeling you feeling your work. And that's, yeah. that's the point is you're, when you, when you start to connect with your art, it is, you know, it's, it's the same with, let's say music. And I'm not a professional musician or anything, but when, when a person, when you listen to a track that's so powerful, you want to run, you want to, it makes you cry, it makes you visualize things, art and painting and, and photography and film that does the same thing. You watch a, you watch a movie so powerful, it changes your life. And that came from a screenplay that was that was written by someone who was obsessed about these characters or this world or whatever and, and that's that's art man that's uh that's the whole point of it is to express ourselves because we can do that and we're you know as a, as a as a civilization we can do that and that's amazing i think that's so unique yeah you make um these little shorts they're like a little like slice of life like someone like observing it's like you're walking through a, a city or you're, you're just like observing this one little moment and um those, those are really beautiful and full of like a mood and i feel like i can see the see the world through your eyes a little bit through those um yeah, I'm curious, like, what, um, do you have a goal with these? Or are these just fun personal pieces? Um, I, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of treating them the same way I've been treating my, uh, paintings. Um, it's an extension of what I've always wanted to do, I think. Like, I, I, I've always fantasized that I was one day I was going to make a movie and it was, and it was going to be a short movie to show that I can direct a film and then I'll get to make a feature film. But that changed because I realized actually uh, a short film and just sh uh, shorts c should stand on their own. They, they can be their own little stories. It's unnecessary that you don't necessarily need to tell a, an hour, 20 minute movie. So I think that that hyped me up. And before I learned Blender, I was trying to do it all through uh, After Effects and taking paintings and cutting them up and, and creating the illusion of depth, creating the illusion of 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 a real space by copying and pasting looped videos of whether it's uh, weather effects hitting the ground like rain or or fog rolling across you know I was trying to do that in After Effects and it was killing me and I was I was about ready to give up because it was so painstakingly hard and uh, um. It was just it was just exhausting. I probably would have still been doing it if I um if I didn't pick up Blender, but I I I caved in and that's another thing. This is how this shit carries with me. I was so like, yeah, I don't I don't need 3D because I can do things and and it's all, I'm already doing 2D and I'm doing it fast. I don't need 3D. It's such a like I sometimes I'm afraid of myself because I, I actually don't know if I if if I'm still in this trap mindset and when am I going to realize the next growth? Like I hope I'm not doing that now with my current thing. Whatever I'm might be, you know, uh I don't need to do this or that. Like I hope I I I've, I'm over that and just attacking everything uh when i see the opportunity anyway uh, i i picked up unreal when especially when lumen was advertised and this new engine stuff and lighting and like dude i i just plopped out assets that i download and i can make these 
shots and I that became less and less exciting the more I tried it uh, because uh, it was so heavily reliant on the tool itself to do the stuff that I actually wanted to do, which was the lighting and the and uh, the control of of the feeling of the whole thing. So it was it was kind of locked in in Unreal's Unreal's kit, and that was probably early on. Maybe it's different now. I don't know. But a friend of mine told me you should you should try Blender. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but you should try Blender. And I. Because I was so obsessed, I picked that up uh, in a matter of like a month. I think it was two months. I, I grasped Blender to a near fluent sort of repetitive second nature, almost like drawing. And uh, I haven't dropped. I've, I haven't, I've been using it since. That and also painting and uh, creating, creating paintings painting like frames i'm trying you know uh because there is still a quality to edges and quality to the 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 polygon the the voxel look of things or the 3d scan things you know i uh that that gets into my head and, and i'm like oh but it doesn't look realistic enough but then i I have realized that it's not about making something look photo real. It's it's about something that has feeling and and can tell your expression, tell your story uh, that you want to tell, even if it's just like for ten seconds. Uh, and um, that got me out of a, a mind lock, so to speak, and I started to experiment and be so much more free with blender and uh, uh, that tool allows allows you to be free like blender is just you can if blender had if blender had like a like a a webby paint add-on or like or like a rebel or a photoshop kit of like painting where you can paint in blender and then just it turns into a card so you know, you know, hint, hint. If anybody's listening, damn, that'd be awesome. That I would never touch Photoshop. I that Blender would be the tool forever. Like you can make everything. In there. Um, but I, I also, uh, I also have a background in in in. I, most people would think something like this doesn't matter doesn't count because it's, it's at a certain age but in high school i i was part of this film program after after class and i learned a lot about uh, uh shot lists and script breakdowns and, and cameras and how to edit and and even before high school uh, uh, i i was very fortunate to be part of schools that had film you know like uh, in middle school, I, I had uh, exposure to editing with like these ancient editing bays where you're unplugging wires and and you're you're working with beta cassettes and and controlling cameras like news operators and shit. And you're and and that went over my head. But that is something that was ingrained in me, and I think it came it started coming through. Uh, these past years uh, back into the mix of my my tool sets, so to speak. And I, I haven't been, I, I've been so happy that that started happening because it's, it has, I feel like it's just opened up the ability to express my ideas even, even further, you know, um, because there was a time when I was asking, especially, you know, um, to be very honest, you know, elephant in the room, so to speak. Um, when when the whole AI stuff started happening, uh, it it started, everybody was questioning their value and whatnot. And it did make me think like, so what's, what's going to happen to digital painting? Is there going to be an evolution? Are we all going to incorporate 
AI to that stuff. And, and I think that was also part of the, the slingshot trajectory, you know, that made me go into making things move in, hmm. uh, in, in my, in my images. So, uh, but it's definitely grown from that. And I just, I just like to, I love to edit. I love to make my music. I love to try and tell a mood, a story through, through these things and just share them the same way I've done my paintings. Um, I don't, I don't want to sit here and pretend like I'm a, a tour filmmaker. I, 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 I look at them constantly, the, the greats and, and I, I learned from them, but I'm I'm still I'm still the uh, keyframe, the, the still the same person. I just I just like making short movies now as well. Yeah, where how do you start those? Is it just start with an idea? Do you start sketching? Does it have a script? That's a good question. I I I do sometimes write down these ideas. Uh, I actually write them down all the time. And a lot of the time they're inspired by dreams. And if I don't write down a dream that I really could remember, I, I lose my mind. But I write these ideas down and I write down the feeling and I write down the tone. Uh, and if there was a sense of music that I remember, I'd hum it into my phone, the melody, and I'd save that. And uh, I'd pick it up later. Like I'd, I'd forget about it. And then I'm like, ah, but I, I wrote it down. It is remembered. So I'd go back. And what happens is interesting. Sometimes I, I, I start it right there and then, and I don't lose momentum. And it comes out to be what it is. And that's awesome. And other times I go back to it. I'm like, that's strange. I was trying to do that, but I see it how I can actually make it a bit more honest, a bit better, and I improve on that idea, and then I make it. But it it actually starts with either a, a simple sketch or making a track. I, I feel like making music beforehand is my my way of of uh, of writing because the for me personally, the music makes me see the visuals. It makes me feel the pacing of cuts if anything um how long i need something and on on screen and that's that's exciting however i really should get into the habit of writing this stuff because there you go there that's my thing that's that, that's my next thing because i've been putting it off like i don't need to write it because i do it through music but actually it'd be great to write it i <laughs> I answer my own question. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, that's how it is. It's through it's through sketches, writing out short ideas, and music. Actually, a lot of the time. Hmm. Interesting, and um, music. Like I play, I play guitar a little bit. I've kind of played my whole life. Um, in high school, I was in bands and stuff. But um, today, it's it's like I'll just pick up a guitar and like write some riffs or something and it's I don't know it's nice to have like another creative outlet that's not art you know kind of like yeah you can be creative in a different way um I don't know do you feel like that with your music yes uh, music has been cape for me um Music has been uh, something taught me to embrace and, and and love darkness, and not in a you know gothy emo way, although it could be understood as that. It's more like, and not no offense to that. I'm not I'm not dissing it, but it's more like um, 
I've always found myself in the past making tracks. I felt very emotional and and sad. I was feeling like I wasn't getting anywhere in my life. I would make music and it would always be at ungodly hours through the middle of the night. And I would do it to like the only thing on is my computer screen. And I'd make these tracks that would loop and build. Uh, and I would just turn off my monitor and, and feel what I've made. And then I would snap out of my little emotional, probably narcissistic little baby tantrum that I was going through. And I would have a good track and then i'd feel excited about it i was like that was a good track and it came it came from somewhere real you know <laughs> and that's how i would think about it but i do i do think that that's that's that is the truth to it and that's how i make music today but it's not necessarily when i feel dark or sad it's more like i have this great feeling this great idea for an image or a short and i feel like i can already he hear maybe the 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 sound to it so i will try to experiment and find that thing and uh i use uh, i used to use loopers i i used to use my guitar i i don't know how to play guitar uh, probably like how you know how to play guitar. I I, I know very basic stuff. Uh, I know how to hold and and, and hit chords and and uh, but I don't know. I don't know it the way a guitarist would know it, or I don't know how to. I don't know how to play piano the way a, a professional, a seasoned pianist knows how to. But I can I can play it, and I and I learn by ear. I can mimic music by ear if i needed to but i never do that my first instrument actually when i was a when i was in uh i in Bul i'm originally Bul from bulgaria uh which is in eastern europe and when i was in kindergarten uh first grade i guess it was kind of mandatory to learn music and they have the kids singing in class and stuff and I learned to play a violin, and this violin was 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 a tiny violin. It almost sounds like a a bit, like a joke, but but I I I was I was playing violin, and I uh, really didn't like it. But I was there was a sense of interest to it, but I really didn't like the pressure of music and how serious it was being taken and the discipline and. The, and just the stress that I was feeling, and, and uh, but uh, that stayed with me, I think, and I'm very grateful that that stayed with me throughout my life because I I, I picked it up, and I I think it's because I noticed friends reacting to my music. You know, they're all like, "That's a pretty cool beat." I would record, I would record my music with tape recorder pushed up against my Windows 95 computer and I'd hit play on Fruity Loops or at the time it was actually um, propeller heads and it was just like a, a sequencer. And, and I, I, I would just do that. I was like, this is great. And then I'd play it for my friends in, in high school. It's like, check this out. It was so <laughs> grainy, and it was like that's so cool. You made that, <laughs> and that gave me a drive to never drop it, to keep going with electronic. Little did I know that you can do so much on a computer. You can compose an entire score that sounds classical and and, and, and uh, wind instruments and, and whatever it doesn't necessarily have to sound electronic or 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 synthy at all so that that was a you know that was also a, a sort of a breakthrough for me so i 
compose and program everything on my computer and yeah that's at least that's how i how i make my my stuff that's cool yeah. um when you're capturing a moment um do you close your eyes and try to envision it as a movie um do you start with just searching for references um do you just start painting or just start scribbling and try to find something out of the scribbles like how do you how do you go about capturing a moment that i definitely do a thing where i can see moments as as um as a as a movie um and and then i think afterwards i look in and look at reference that match my vision close you know in the ballpark and i used to paint it directly i used to do that i used to go i have a scene and then i search for it and i'd squint my eyes and i'd sort of explore and search and sketch and, and really paint it and uh, I still do that from time to time, but I really enjoy surprising myself by getting reference and just, it's almost like throwing it in a blender, putting, like cutting it up, cutting up reference and, and piecing it together and seeing the rough idea, but but the unintended accidents that is happening from photos or textures and, and what comes of that. And then that just gives me better ideas. Like on top of my idea, it not only does it sometimes tell me, Oh, this is too plain. Or so what is it? You're, what are you going to do? Actually, Ask yourself, you know, I'm telling this to myself, ask yourself, what what am I doing here? Am I just going to show this guy standing over a, the hilltop? Or should I focus on, on the personal thing that this character is having in his home life? So I'm showing this moment because I saw this as like a cool cool moment. Fine, it, it, I, I'll, I'll save it as a version but now it, I have an idea that I want to show him in the moment that triggered everything else in this movie that's fictitious, that's playing out in my head. And that's, and that's how I end up generating a series of images as opposed to just like doing one and then starting another, which is also what I used to do. But I, I've been very much in the habit of like creating a series now of like just exploring the world until I am tired of it. And I'm doing that currently because I want to try and I still feel like I haven't expressed myself the most in the most vulnerable way you know what i'm saying like i i there's a quote that you hear floating see read floating around from uh quentin tarantino on instagram every once in a while it's like when you if you write something if you want write a screenplay or direct a movie that is uh i forget how it's written but it's, that is super embarrassing to share that's that you want to be that honest so i always remind myself to to be super honest with the story of of whatever i'm doing here so in a way that's kind of helped me to um i'd like to think at least it's helped me to be a better thinker the way a writer would be a good writer i think is someone who writes the character, writes the story in an honest way. Um, you know, 
uh, it's hard to give an example of that, but take any film that has stayed with you and and question why you love it, why you love the characters, because probably they're written in a in a way where it's it's true to who they are, it's true to the world they're in, you know. So when I create pieces like that, it I very often to this day stop myself because I, f I find myself creating something bland and not pushing myself hard enough and I and I either restart it or I find a better way to express that idea and that's the challenge of the I think that's the challenge of the art itself uh is is to push yourself it's so easily said and it's very easy to hear a commentary by I don't know Tarantino or Werner Herzog saying this and you're like oh yeah yeah totally I get it but then when you start doing it sometimes you don't even know where to begin and uh that's probably the hardest part not knowing where to start you know one of the best advice um or maybe it was yeah it was kind of like a launch one of my directors gave me um he he like launched me on the location and the and the part of the story that we were working on and he said he asked me to find something in the character that I could relate to or put myself into the character in a way and then put myself into the scene and bring it um bring it into my world somehow like uh, find that connection things that I could connect to like what what am I going to see what am I noticing like what is what is the weather like the feeling um a lot of those those little like more personal things that sometimes you forget when you're painting um you're like oh I want to make a beautiful painting with like nice nice lighting and I want to like worry about every brush stroke um but when um yeah when he like launched me and I put I put myself into that character that's when the painting became personal and it could um it could create a connection with the audience more and I thought that was that's pretty amazing and I hold hold on to that like every time I I, I do a new a new piece I try to find find something in there yeah and I feel like it it's 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 it gets more challenging every time you try it mm -hmm. because like it's a like uh uh you almost in the back of my mind I, I, at least I, I, I find that I don't want to repeat myself and I know I repeat myself all the time like I do the same I start copying myself and I'm like oh, I already did this idea I feel like yeah but it's already been done anyway um, it's not like I'm reinventing something new but but then I remember people saying but no 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 but your version will be unique to you that what you're saying as long as you're clearly not plagiarizing it from somebody else your version the way you want to tell the story about a bank robbery is going to be unique to how you do it if you truly put your mind to it uh but uh yeah um that's another thing is it, is I, I i find that 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 could also be a deterrent in in writing work sometimes for me is is um i stop to question whether i've done this before i've gotten into a better mindset of not giving a damn and just doing it anyway because it it it's gonna come out different it, so what you know i'm again i have to i have to remind myself that my fantasy world that i live in in my head to to uh to be able to produce work, uh, personal work or even commercial stuff, um, is not actually a real world. You know, it's it's more, it's a tool. It's a thing that I use for myself, and um, 
when I snap out of it, I'm like, yeah, I'm still just a, I'm, I'm, I'm just a concept artist. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a great director. I'm not, I'm not Quentin Tarantino. Like, and it's that it feels good. It feels good to, to, to be in that place and, and be like, just, it just, a, there's a lot more freedom, you know, mm. uh, and, and so much more strength to the learning and the the experience of, of making new stuff so when you're sketching outside do you um you mostly just sketch with line you're not painting much right uh i have been i i miss i miss painting i miss gouache painting i i and oil i used to paint constantly and uh but yeah, it's just been with pen. Uh, and I I kind of use sketching that sketching things like that as a as a method of 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 getting myself to um to to, to commit to the marks I'm making to not care about perfect mark making, if that makes sense. It's like, there is no undo, obviously, but then I'm not allowed to search. And there's a, there's a freeing thing in that. Although searching is nice and you're feeling the gesture of things, but I'm just going to put the first thing down and it might be the ugliest thing, but then I'm going to leave it because in painting that translates amazingly. When you put down that first stroke with a thought, of course, and you're not, it's not aimless, not, it's not mindless. You're not looking at the window while doing it. No, you're, you're, you're putting it down, but there's a tendency to be like, especially in digital, I think there's a tendency in digital to be like, ah, fuck uh, control Z. That's better. Ah, fuck, control Z. That's better. No, nah, control Z. And then you're just stuck. And you might as well be noodling. And um, what sketching with pen does is it it gets me uh, into that freeing, you know, one it's like Bushido blade, one sword cut. That's it. That's all you get. And you can't you can't try to repeat it. Next next line. And it always is so thrilling and exciting for me because the drawing comes out looking so fresh and so does the painting. The painting comes out looking, there's transparencies, there's there's these, there's these life, there's air between brush, brush strokes. And, and uh, I feel like, you know, when, when, when I've started to exercise that more, when I look at someone like, Mullins, for example, even though Mullins tells us, stop looking at my work, look at Sargent, look at the masters. But when when I look when I look at Mullins, I see that. I see it in his work where he just left things and you he moved on. He didn't try to overstate and you know. So that's that's my love about sketching. And and also it's it's the it gives me a reason to just doodle, which I've steered away from for a while now just doodling i i got my i don't know why i did this but i got myself into the mindset of saying when i create art i should really focus on creating something that always has a sense of story a place a mood don't just do mindless faces my sketchbook is just filled with mindless faces and drawings from life and that's nice it's nice to still have that so yeah, I relate to that. I love going outside, just doing like a tiny little like line drawing or um, painting with acrylics, but keeping it really tiny and just trying to capture just the light and color. I'm not trying to do a beautiful painting um, that I'm going to hang on my wall, but, you know, taking the pressure off and just trying to learn, observe, see how real light happens. You know? That's awesome. How did you study composition? Because for me, 
I got Edgar Payne's book and I went through it and I did like pen drawings or Sharpie drawings. I just copied all of his compositions and then I would copy them in Photoshop. I just kept copying them until I just memorized all of them. And now when I'm painting, I'm like, oh, what would Edgar Payne do? Oh, he's got a medium shape here. Okay, he's going to balance it with a smaller shape or... You know, he's going to follow the line in the clouds to like draw your eye. Um, what was it for you? Um, a film, I, I feel like film studies was a, a form of studying composition specifically for what I do currently. But beforehand, before that, it was uh, the exercises that my uh, my father taught me. And in different mediums, uh, in paint and marker, I, I really just started using ink at, at a certain point. I I ditched charcoal, I Dutch uh, Dutch di ditched paint, and and it was it was sort of like this unforgiving. Once it's down, it's down type of uh, feel, and uh, doing composition studies and marker and and sharpie markers especially that was. That was great. And then film studies like that as well, that that really freed me from trying to be perfect, from trying to be literal. You know, there's so many ways you can study a, a shot. You can copy it for its value and uh, you can copy just the light and the dark shapes, the big and small. And then you can just look at it and and observe how things are blocked and why. I feel like that's one of the most important things is like you're almost starting to teach yourself uh, cinematography or, or photography in a way. It's um, it's how, uh, and which is funny to say because I feel like photographers look at painters. <laughs> but that's, that's even, I don't even know how to talk about that because I'm not an experienced photographer, but like, I don't mean to trail off into a different topic here. I'll come back to it, but I always found that uh, what I'm what, personally, what I try to do with my work is to, to emulate a sort of a, a film, film stock, film emulation, uh, uh, color, uh, 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 color look uh, and, and the grain and, and how light looks like through, through film. It's not pure white and it's not, pure blacks and and cinematographers and directors look at paintings for for the reference so it's like this uh i i don't i don't know how, how, what to think of that but it's it's cool how that works out anyway um yeah composition uh in art center i had a class with I, I I had a Will Weston class, but I Will Weston was not teaching at the time, so it was a substitute teacher. And this guy evidently did storyboarding for The Matrix a little bit. And that was hype already. And I'm like, holy shit, this guy worked on The Matrix. And um, he made us do these exercises with with Sharpie where he'd roll in a TV and he'd play, he actually played the matrix on the first exercise. <laughs> so he, um, he'd be holding the remote control and be like, all right, so you, first person that says stop, I'll pause. And then you have 30 seconds to do, to do a study of the composition, 30 seconds. So really think about what you're going to put down that was the exercise and that got me into that mindset of like of being minimalistic and and just seeing seeing the balance of of how much darkness there is in frame in proportion to light and vice versa i didn't care about i didn't care about the the details or the eyes or whatever it was just more like big and small shapes that got me to get a hang of 
of uh, cinematic composition in a way. I did that constantly. I even when I was on, I got I was obsessed with it, and I didn't even know why. I was just like, "This is so great!" And I would go home and I'd watch every movie and just do that. I had, I have so many films on DVD. I I think I've gone through all of them doing that, uh, and uh, I hit a point where I was like, "I think I." I think I get this and I think I've hit a plateau. I'm not doing anything more with this. So what am I going to do with it? And that's when I started learning value and uh, how to control. And that was, that was hard. I, it took me a long time to understand uh, a readable, believable looking a value structure for a frame, especially in black and white, especially in marker. Cause that's that's difficult marker is difficult to control i think but uh yeah that's that was it that was the beginning for me at least yeah that's cool that's if you can capture a moment and just those two values if it reads with two values then yeah. the painting's like easy you're not Very like easy. fighting it you drop in some colors and right it's something i have to keep reminding myself of like make sure it works in the in the two value always yeah 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 constantly i i see that as well especially now i'm i could be so easily distracted by all the the crazy stuff that is instantly possible through lighting a, a shot in blender i forget to look at just the the balance of the of the frame of you know uh, how much of light is in the frame how much dark there is you know how how dynamic is it the the big and small uh contrast you'd be surprised how much that i i uh, that went over my head for a long time i never I, di I didn't think about big versus small shapes until i i embarrassingly embarrassingly want to say very recent you know i i I started to like reapply that logic and it and it has refreshed my work, I feel like personally. Um, but yeah, very, very useful tool. Um, this is always kind of a tricky thing for me to explain, but how do you know when your painting is done? And I like when people ask me, um, I'm usually like as long as it's it's readable. Um, it's telling the story that you want to tell. Um, you're drawing the eye around the piece in a in a successful way. Um, if it if it does that, then then it's pretty much done. I would say. And then if you if you need to add some more refinement, some detail here and there for depending on who you're showing, um, you know that's the icing on the cake, I guess. That's a hard one. That's that's very difficult for me to explain as well. And I almost don't like to explain it uh, because I mean, I, I'll, uh, it's it's not not that I I'm not gonna explain it. It's just like it's so difficult because it feels like it changes sometimes. But no, it actually uh, it's like you said when it's readable when it's telling the story it needs to tell it's it's like when it's doing all of these things at the same time harmoniously you know uh when it's pleasant to look at when it's thrilling when it's exciting to look at when the story you're telling is is exciting makes you want to know more makes you ask questions maybe uh even if it's super simple, um, yeah, when the composition is exciting, you know, that all falls under the category of of uh, pleasant to look at, I guess. It's done. And then when it gets to the rendering part, I actually often disagree with the the idea of like when it's super rendered and you can see the pores on the skin or whatever the hell. Yeah. Because I know I've worked with clients where it's like, well, this is nice, but it's not done. And what is that? That's a 
that's a those are brush strokes. Yeah, no, no, we can't have that. What? What? <laughs> I've no kidding. I've had that oh. said to me, and I'm like, uh, okay, all right. So you don't want brush strokes. I get it. You want it to look photographic, and rather than telling myself to, to, to blend things over and smooth things over for people that don't even appreciate the art form of that. I directly just, I, I, I bash photo and it gets the job done. But um, at least in that case, it started with a sketch and I, and I try to stay in the sketches design, whether, whether, whether the door, the drawing of the door is slightly crooked, I will, paste a photo of a door in there and I'll make that door crooked just like just like the gesture of the sketch just so so it keeps the character of that not not so I'm not just reliant on photo uh but um sorry I'm trailing off the the a piece is done when exactly when those core elements are successful successful to you and you will know that personally you will feel that it's hard to say when it's done for other people because like you and i have experienced many times someone will be like oh dude that was why did you oh, why did you continue the sketch was perfect you didn't need to and then some people are like yeah so is this all you're gonna turn in are you gonna are you gonna render it out it needs to look like this and then they, and they show you a photo yeah okay all right i'll do a photo but uh yeah um a finished piece is 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 it's almost almost like part of it is a physical thing and, and a, an excitement in its execution and then the other part is like a psychological a mental uh satisfaction of of what you've accomplished it's making you feel something as powerful as you intended it to to be then then it's then it's done and that means that it's readable that means you've gone through it and you're like there's visual literacy applied to it you know like it everything sort of makes sense and uh you've accomplished it through pure indication pure simple brush strokes you didn't you didn't over render a cup a cup is literally one stroke but it feels like a cup because it's placed properly it's the right placement it's the right proportion you, you get what i'm saying right like, and and those things they might seem like very simple and and the, it's an, it's the unfortunate thing working with clients that look at something that's like that's just a brush stroke that, eh, you need to render out the cup but they don't understand that that takes so much. That takes such a journey to do that, to pull that off right. That simple indication is the reason why you gawk at Sergeant for hours. And you're like, how did he do that? The hand is just, that's, that's exactly how he didn't, he didn't render anything. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a it's a balance it's a journey to find out when things something is done eventually when when uh when i teach a class and people in my class ask that question i i i, I explain this stuff but i i uh i almost always want to tell them that it's uh it's just you have to you have to live through many times many trial and errors until you figure out when it's done for you that's that's really what it is because it is a battle too i can't stress how many times in art center that was an issue sorry to go back to that but like so many times people would tell me yeah you need to learn how to render more you need to learn how to render better and that got into my head to a toxic level of just what does that mean rendering you could tell it's a face and it it's lit the values are good and you know i justify it and i don't know if it's because of i didn't want to because i 
liked it or not, uh, or, or, or it already looked pretty to me, and I didn't want to ruin it by overkilling it. Uh, but uh, that that mindset of people telling me render more, render better. When you're in the industry, they're gonna want you to render things out because then they use the textures for this or that, and the design it has to look real. That that becomes a sort of a it's like a nail on on the wall that you can't remove as a memory. And when you start working, it's so, it's very common that question, and it's understandable, and and it's understandable that it's also frustrating for people and i wonder if it's the same feeling where they're coming from like oh because i don't know when something's done i always get told that it's that it's not finished i always get told that it's uh, you know it could be taken further and i don't know what that means i thought i took it as far as i can and i almost feel like that could be a stray off the path you know like uh, you can be misguided on on your road if you're if you're already going down a road and you're feeling what you're doing um it's very easy to to hear feedback like that be it from a client or from from a friend and then that just derails you and then it becomes this practice of obsessive like i guess i need to learn how to do things more polished and and really it's 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 about remaining in the zone of where you're always a child with always having fun with your art like the free care the carefree unrestricted today i'm going to paint the most vile thing possible and I'm going to share it with the world because I don't care it's freedom it's complete just unchained madness and that's my art and you're loving it and then if someone says yeah but that's not it could be rendered a little better like get get out of my room <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I I'm probably this is probably a bad example, but it's uh it's just I don't know. I, I think it's there's parts to that question and and the whole explanation afterwards. It's a sensitive thing, you know, because who who are they to tell you that your work is finished? Maybe if it was you, maybe if it was Sergeant, maybe it was if it was Mullins, whoever, telling you like, yeah, but you could take that further and it would shine. Then I would listen. But most of the time, it's not. Most of the time, it's it's a money guy or it's a person that doesn't even paint telling you to take the image to what's the trend or what's expected or the thing they downloaded online like look look at this guy's work yeah but that that's 3d dude that's you want me to paint the thing and make it look like that 3d image that's uh, okay i i will spend a longer time on it so anyway yeah um when i was at sony working on animated ghostbusters movie um oh, is cool. one of my yeah they, i guess they're still i think they turned into a tv show now but it was, it was one of my first jobs and my production designer <clears throat> up until that point, I would spend, you know, I would do, spend like all day, maybe two days on a painting and, um, you know, on like a story moment on my pitch painting or whatever. And we were really early in the process where we didn't even have a script or anything. And um, I remember my my production designer, he was like, what if you did like six paintings in one day? And I was like, what? How, how can I do that? Like, I remember just thinking about that for a month or two and just trying and not knowing how I could possibly do that. Um, 
but eventually so we, it's like what you said about like kind of like just being a kid again like throwing stuff down and I was like not being precious with things I was just being really bold and um I couldn't worry about making um each painting beautiful or each painting like finished it was just capturing that idea and then you know timing myself for an hour hour and a half capturing the idea moving on to the next one capturing a new idea a new color scheme a new um composition new story moment um but yeah through that experience I learned you can't um you can't put everything into one painting and you can't um worry about like like the finish we're just generating ideas and when you present these they might pick an idea from this one from this one from this one um and you're showing all these all these different ideas and that will create something better um because you it'll take all this feedback and then you'll you'll create something new um but yeah that was it's a good experience for me and very difficult but yeah ha have you ever had yeah. to uh deal with a situation where they ask you to cram everything into a painting how did you how would you do yeah. that yeah. i mean i i mean I, I think all of us have but it's just like i'm curious as to because your paintings have such a freshness and life and i feel like if anybody could solve that issue through just purely compositional design let alone uh value and temperature you know uh it would it would it would be you because it's so like when you look at your stuff it reads beautifully from far away and you can already tell what's happening uh just energy the energy already tells you what's happening and in that painterliness you can choose to make things exist like oh there's there's so many characters here and then there's so many things happening but because it's composed so well that's that brings it so much more life and it's so pleasant and comfortable to look at so i was wondering like have you ever had a time where you're like there's okay so uh we need to know that this is this is the main character and he's jumping into the dragon's mouth and and uh, the parents are there and his his sister's there at, right after the wedding but we need to know that she's unhappy with her brother because the brother just told the cake and, and all these story moments that they're trying to cram into like this crescendo event where you're like I, it's actually just about him jumping into the mouth because if because if he doesn't make the trip in the mouth the movie's over <laughs> <laughs> so anyway sorry I, i'm wondering how do you deal with that yeah that, that drives me insane when they try to jam too much into one thing like it's so crazy yeah um if i have the time to do it i will i will turn that into like a sequence of paintings i'll be like okay here's the best shot for this moment the 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 girl jumping through the dragon's mouth and then and then the next shot is um you know the family and then the then their their interaction but you would see the dragon in the background um so i would try to break it up and into something like that because that's that's how you're going to see it in the movie um you're not going to see everything happening in one frame and do you have to like pitch it to them like that even what if they were Sorry, I don't mean to ask you so many questions, but like, what if they were uh, uh, insistent on it being one big frame? Like, would you, and you said, yeah, okay, they want to see it in one frame, but I'm going to show it in the sequence and tell them why it's successful in a sequence. Like you you still push to show it in the way you th you think it should be shown. 
Yeah, I would, if I can, I would do both. Um, yeah. So I would try to try to hit ex exactly what they're telling me, like do this, this, and this, this all in one frame. Um, so I'd be like, Hey, here's, here's, here's the image that you guys asked for. Um, I had another idea if you're interested. Um, and then I would kind of like pitch through my idea. So, um, hopefully by them seeing it, it would convince them, uh, that this way is a little bit better. Maybe. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's great. That's How do awesome. you handle that? I, I, I'd, I'd like to think I, I try to handle it the same way, but Uh, it's a little different because the work, the, the turnaround of the work that they asked me to do a lot of the times is like, yeah, it needs to be near finished by the end. So I'm like, how do I, how do I not only finish what they're asking for, but show them the sequence. And and I try to pull it off and show the sequence in a little bit of a looser manner. And then when I show them the, the sequential they're like oh yeah yeah that the, that one frame's perfect the sequence is nice if we if we need that we'll, we'll look i'm like god damn it <laughs> why uh okay whatever and at that point i i have to learn to separate myself from the concept of it you know being the way i thought they would like it to be and, and all that but um it and it I find that in live action, that's more, that's more of a thing where it's like, they ask for everything crammed into into one frame, and you show them that plus, the better versions, and they're like, yeah, the versions are cool, but w this is what we want, <sighs> and and when I've worked in animation, I feel like they actually a lot of the times really appreciate you exploring other ways to communicate that story, which is showing it through sequence. And I don't know why that's so. I don't know what the big difference is. It's you're still making a movie and you're still telling a story. And, but uh, yeah. Um, you touched on it earlier, but I was curious, um, in, in animation where we're starting to use AI a bit, um, mm. mostly directors. I found the past couple of years they will um, they'll generate a bunch of images and um, they'll try to get um, something kind of close to what they're what they're looking for, um, and then they'll they'll give these AI generated images to the art team to that almost as like like Google images to like then use as reference. Um, when that first started happening, I was like a little bit, a little bit torn. I was like, Hey, this kind of speeds up the process a little bit. We get a little bit closer to what the directors want um, right away. It's kind of nice. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, but the director just doing that, we're missing out on those, really fun early stages of the Vizda process where we're just, you know, a bunch of us together, like brainstorming, throwing ideas, sketching, passing ideas back and forth, um, and kind of discovering something. Um, yeah. So I don't know, I don't know how I, how I feel about it. And I don't know what the, the future of that is. Um, I'm curious what it's like in live action. Have you experienced any of that? Uh, I, I have, I have, but very little. When I was at Marvel, I didn't even know, cause you know, that whole entire thing came out about, you know, art department side or whoever decided to do the whole intro as a, as AI for, for the secret invasion show and whatnot but yeah uh, we didn't you know on the viz dev side of things we i no no one really had a clue that that was happening or was going to happen 
I, I'm trying to remember. I I did work on just a couple maybe freelance live action shows, and it was for TV series where they sh they sent me. Um, they sent me just generated bulbous chaos of texture for for the idea of like an alien it's like so now that's that's kind of what the director is thinking like really yeah so can you take that and and sort of really push it further and flesh it out and at first i couldn't help but feel insulted and all that and oh how could they and here's uh, i'm an artist and but i realized it's 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 actually in an probably I, i'm just trying to think of it like that uh at the time i was thinking it that it's a form of uh it's a form of writing out an idea that you don't know how to describe so like they use the generated image they're like that's kind of what the alien should look like because maybe they didn't know how to write it out maybe they were still working on the script and and a bulbous looking alien approaches the character good luck here's here's the script this part i want you to design bulbous bulbous looking alien that could be so such a long journey to get to that bulbous looking but they they uh mid journeyed it or whatever and they gave me a thing and and i was able to use that yeah much like much like a google image and and just go from there just pull from it i separated myself from the toxicity that was already surrounded with ai and the divide between artists and what would they think and all that stuff because i also think that that is just I, I hate that stuff. I hate the whole social media view on it and people just... It's like this. I don't know what to call it. Is it, is it cancel culture or is it not? Where like somebody shows AI and then it's like, oh, uh, unsubscribed, unfollowed, like all that nonsense. You're like... Maybe maybe he's trying to find something. Maybe that's just a journey for him to like hit a thing, a wall, and then he'll figure out or she or who, whatever. But uh, anyway, uh, this is beside the point. The, um, yeah, I, I worked on a show like that and, and it was used. And uh, the one time it, it affected me personally is when they actually used my art in, in front of me. <laughs> I turned in my paintings and, and then they were like, now we, we, uh, we generated your art and, and this is what came out of it. Now, can you, can you use that? Can you oh, like, man. can you design on top of that? And I was like, it generated my art. <laughs> I was like thinking that I was like, man, uh, can you next time? Can you please tell me before you do that? I just personally don't want to be training. It's your movie. It's your show. So I don't care. But but please let me know. Because it is still a signature thing. And I, it's the way I painted it and all that. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. This is just, we're not going to. Fine, fine. I, I, I sort of let go and calm myself down with that. And then I tested it on my art anyway <laughs> i went in and i uploaded images that i had done a while back personal work to see what would come out and then the, the biggest pile of shit came out i was and i and i calmed me down i was like eh. yeah it's nothing it's like it's just chaos and you're just producing how how could that be possible in the style of and i put my name in there and hit enter, nothing comes out. Nothing even remotely to what I find expressive about my work. So in, maybe it'll improve over time. Honestly, I don't care. 
I don't care if it, it becomes lifelike. It's just, I think the, the power and the charm of what we do as artists is really from our heart. It's from what we express using the journeys we've had in our life. You know, these emotional moments, you, you pull from something. Um, and it's not a competition. It's not to be like, hey, I can't do that. That's why we're better. <laughs> it's more like appreciating. It's it's an appreciation. That's what's what that's what's lacking. If anything, people are probably arguing there's there's a devaluation of of art and and what and and yeah. I mean it's it's a it's a lack of appreciation in the craft of the thing. That's why sometimes movies come out as bland as they are, and and you wonder why. But it, that is the case. So. You know, eventually people will get tired of that stuff, and and it, and there and it's probably gonna. What's gonna happen is you'll be able to sit at home and and generate your own movie. I want to watch Moana uh, fighting all the characters from Mortal Kombat, and go. Ah. And then you're, like, that's your movie. Okay, good luck. And then there's gonna be people that will make films that will. Uh, be of some sort of personal meaning and journey that could that could inspire you and uplift you and because how, how the I, to take that as an example sorry i've i've really trailed off here i, I apologize but to take that as an as a fictitious example whether it happens or not of us generating our movies from our couch on netflix uh how far could that go you know, not to get too deep in this conversation about AI, but like, how far could it possibly go before we get bored of our own, like our own silliness? And, uh, you know, make the, the most intriguing thing would probably be make, make a movie about my life. Okay, describe your life. Well, I was born and like, what, what, what could be the interest there's there's got to be it's got there's definitely going to be a, a an actual maybe more entertaining and and better use for it where it's going to maybe redefine and remind refresh uh people that th this is why artists and this is why the skill set of learning art and paint and sculpture and making music and making movies is 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 important to to the human race you know never mind if you're making it for entertainment or hollywood you're making it as an expression this is why and and you could also if you chose play with the gimmick of ai because Artificial intelligence could also be used for actual helpful things in life, uh, whether it's medicine or protection or whatever. And no one, no one really asked for this image stuff. <laughs> just, just we didn't really need it. So I got to, I got to stop and think that it's, it's going through a transition. It's going through a transformative stage and it'll it'll hit its mark and then it'll just it'll sort of fade away because there's only so much we can do with that. But for the simple matter that we haven't even explored the full spectrum of making movies, let alone the full spectrum of making interesting games. So what more if we, what are you going to do with AI? You, is it is it just because it's generated, self-generated? Is that going to make it more interesting? Is that going to be more appealing for people that want to experience something outside of their back-breaking, monotonous life? You know, not everybody has a life of of experiencing interesting things. People usually have this like flat note 
work, wake up, work, sleep, wake up, work. I mean, I, I, I've definitely lived that uh, with with being an artist. But but I'm I'm saying, you know, uh, there is a there is a element of what we see in even in, in, a, in a movie like Dark City or The Matrix or something where it's just you're you are designed to be this it's a Duracell battery in <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna sit in front of the TV to to watch mediocre milky images or are you gonna sit in front of the TV if you're gonna sit in front of the TV at all and watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or Goodwill Hunting and like fuck dude after watching that film, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna start I'm gonna start writing again. Whatever it could be. That's the power we have anyway. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Really, I really went off trail on that. Sorry, is that no, that's great. I, 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 I think about that stuff all the time and I try to be positive and and thinking out of the box with it i don't like thinking negative about it so uh yeah yeah no i, I think that's great and i agree i i feel like there is the dystopian future where we're sitting on our couch and we just tell the ai what kind of movie you want to see it's like oh i want to see jim carrey from dumb and dumber and uh with in like jurassic world and like you know it's, it's so, something's like so silly and hilarious like <laughs> yeah you know like that'll be kind of like the burger king of entertainment movies um but then there'll be like the real like handmade beautiful like miyazaki movie that every frame is touched by an artist's hand yeah and um you know to think that work is going to disappear because of that i think is a bit um i don't think that's true it's it's uh you know, jobs are not going to disappear just because that's just going to be a, a an option. I think I think artists and writers and actors and directors and all that editors that's still going to be a thing. There's mm -hmm. going to be tools to sp help speed up a process, maybe, but you're, you'll still you'll still have to. If anything, it'll be much harder to get good. Because you'll be competing with a overall machine for yourself to to be like, I gotta keep up. To... It used to be this level, but it's it's like, I, I I mean that's what we do now anyway. You know that's why we paint and practice and think. If anything, most of the time it's spent thinking mm -hmm. before we do anything with art. Yeah. So. Something I struggle with is putting my self-worth into my achievements, into the paintings I do. Like if I have a bad painting week, then man, my life just like sucks, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm worthless. Um, and I know that's not that's not healthy and that's not the way you should think about it. But have you ever struggled with this? And is there anything you did to overcome that maybe? Oh man. Yeah. Maybe you don't have this problem. I don't know. No, I I have it. I have it a, a lot actually. Uh, one of the reasons is because I'm overthinking because I'm noodling and like we said earlier, it's like just being more deliberate and committed to the strokes. It's it's more like the the physical aspect of of painting it, and then. And then it's the honesty of the idea and and wh where the idea came from for the painting. Cause I'm like, a lot of time when I, when I hate my painting and feel like I've had a bad week is because, and this is, I'll, 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 I'll talk about both things for me for personal and for client work, because for personal work, at least I have the freedom to sit down and, think of something better but with the client work let's say they give me an idea that is very bland and in fact to make this example even more challenging i've been asked uh, to make a simple shot 
look boring and sterile. I, I, I was given a shot and I, and I did my homework and I looked at other movies and how they, 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 composed shots of a simple conversation around a, a kitchen table like hey it could be shot in so many interesting ways and and the, it could be lit like this and that and then i did that and uh and uh and then the feedback was like alex this needs to be sterile and boring this needs to be not as exciting as this. Can you make it sterile and boring? I'm like, that's the first time I've ever been asked to do something like that. Sterile and boring. What do you mean? Just a simple, just just a simple, just, all this lighting and you don't need to do that. Just simple. All right. So then I went and I looked at movies that did the same thing, but with flat lighting, almost overcast lighting kind of, but through, through the windows and simple natural lighting sterile boring i did that i was like no 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 still it just needs to just take out lighting i was like what the fuck <laughs> take out lighting so so then it, it was a matter of like moving the lights so they they're lit from every direction in a way and then it looked like a freaking commercial shoot or something i don't know i don't know how to describe it and that was successful, but the 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 fun part, the challenge, and the 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 crazy self deprecating journey to that was that I'm trying to the fun part, and and, and the reason why it helped is because I knew where to look for reference, and I and I've seen what they're looking for, and it went down all these levels of like, no, it still needs to be more boring, more boring. Got it. That that was great, and I was able to execute it. The the failure in that process was the fact that I was in that in that process. I fell into like this noodling black hole, you know, where I'm like. I'm already painting an image out of stress because they needed in a short period of time. I'm already painting physically without knowing why and what I'm painting. And that's usually when disasters to your work happen all the time. Doesn't fail. Just complete garbage comes out and you do it and you think it's great. And you wake up the next day and you look at it and you're like, ah, this is just, you <laughs> Got a panic attack. Like, mm -hmm. No, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> but when it's when you, I feel like, especially when it's for a client, when you when you slow down and you you think about all these things beforehand, not only does the painting come out looking decent and good, maybe exciting, even if it's the most boring task, but. Uh, Uh, yeah, the the journey is fun. The the overall the energy is still, although it's boring, it's still it's still uh, a, a fun image to look at. You know, it, you still you produce. Uh, uh, what I meant to say was you you produce uh, you spend less time painting. You you kind of because you've thought about all these things. You, you you know how to do it really quickly within like three to four hours for a full fleshed out painting. You know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, I know exactly what I need to do. <laughs> like immediately, you don't mess around. You're not, ah, maybe this is better and this is better. And then, then they come around and they're like, so let me see what, what, what so what's happening yeah i think that's and they could sense the uncertainty in you because they've worked with so many people in the past they could hear it in your voice yeah uh, yeah maybe maybe this isn't a maybe it sucks start over no, no they they never said that but like it's they could feel it so 
the confidence comes with it too when you when you when you do your homework and plan out and, uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean like doing a thousand thumbnails for a piece or whatever I'm, I'm i'm literally saying like researching and and how it can work and where it has worked before you know there's plenty of masters out there filmmakers and painters that have done that well you just have to find it so yeah and that's hard man that's easier to said than done that's that's hard to uh so to when that when that hasn't happened when i haven't been able to do my work i uh i do my best to produce decent painting even though i hate every moment of it because mm -hmm. it's still for a client and they're still paying you and you should do your best to, to to respect what they want i it's that's that's the hardest when you when you do when you have a derailing moment like that it's it's rough yeah yeah definitely um love death and robots uh you worked on the yeah. bad traveling short yeah. that that was one of my favorite shorts out of out of season one and two. Like um I I when I watched it, I had a feeling that you worked on it, but I didn't ask you or anything. And then when I saw you post stuff, I was like, oh, I knew it. <laughs> That's so cool. Thanks. Um, but you did color keys and concepts, right? Yeah, mainly yeah. color keys, mainly color keys. Um yeah, I got I got on that show thanks to my friend uh, uh, Alexi, and he was uh, art directing uh, over at Blur, and uh, he hit me up and he's like, "So we're gonna do a Love Death and Robots." I'm like, "Oh, awesome! That's so cool!" And uh, yeah, so this is for David Fincher. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. So we're all. <laughs> We're all, you know, doing parts of it. Uh, I'm going to give you a part to figure out. And uh, he has specific notes. And uh, it's, uh, we're following a certain color palette. And uh, we're going to take these 3D plates, 3D, just very rough, you know, previs, you know, how previs looks in, in basic 3D. We're going to take that and we're going to, applied lighting passes over it pretty much we're just lighting it and thinking about color like awesome that's that was a school because then i uh the feedback you know that came came back to it and how much to simplify or how much to push to intensify a certain or this needs to be more yellow oh moonlight he doesn't like moonlight to be blue you know there's there's the James Cameron moonlight where it's all blue. He doesn't go for that. He goes more of, of the actual naturalistic moonlight where it's it's a reflection of the sun and all this. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. That's so cool to to learn it like that. And uh, that was that was that was a fun experience. It felt like it went by so quick. I I miss it, but that was a great experience. Uh, and Alexi is a great 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 guy to work with and all the guys at blur I, i've worked with them several a few times I, and it was actually because of that i i ended up working again very briefly for uh on on the killer which is david fincher's doing the same same thing which was color beats very very brief i actually i wish i could share them but i'm not allowed to do that yet uh i don't know why but same thing it was the same type of thinking and process uh i think I, I did pretty much about five to seven images and that was it and that was it but uh very loose very very loose nothing nothing fleshed out or overly rendered uh, um yeah that was that was cool and the second time you know uh after that the second time when i worked with blurred was for a spider-man trailer and it was very uh it was for for a game cinematic 
uh, or a PlayStation Sony cinematic, something like that. And it was very similar. You know, it's it's about doing color and and lighting passes, and that was that was really fun too. But Blur is a great place. Uh, I just shout out to Blur and shout out to to Alexi. He's 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 an awesome awesome artist. So. Um, yeah, yeah. So can't was, wait. So cool. Hopefully, you can share those. I wanna, I wanna see. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I think the Spider Man ones I could probably share, but mm. uh, yeah, the the thing for Netflix, the killer one, I don't know. I wish I could, but yeah. Um, I've only worked like very, very briefly in live action, um, like only like a, a few weeks. Um, so I, I have like basically no experience. Um, but I'm curious, could you take me through like a launch? Like what's the launch like um, doing the assignment, um, you know, up until you you share it, up until like the review? Like what what is all that like? review as in like pre present presenting it yeah um well uh the launch usually you sit down in a meeting a zoom call and um you know after all the paperwork and all that shit uh you sit down and you get a rundown of what the show's about and what the story is about and uh if they have a script or not uh, they'll they'll run you through the script roughly, and basically what they're what the story is about, and blah blah blah. They sort of pitch you the movie in a way, and and then they tell you where you come in, sort of, or if they have you in mind for the entire script, they'll tell you that as well in advance, possibly, and you uh, they ask you. Uh, Sometimes they ask you questions like, so how, you know, would you be able to deliver, how many frames do you think you can, you know, do you want to catch up at the end of the week or what? Like they they set a time, you have the moment of, I'm really going in detail here, but like this is just at least my my personal experience where they're like, so what are you going to be able to, like when's, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, like, uh, how about how about Thursdays or Fridays? I was like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> because sometimes what I used to not what this used to not happen and I'd be like everyday updates and I'm like oh, I shot myself in the foot <sighs> and, and that's probably bad for any live action or animation everyday updates and then they ex start expecting that and they start expecting that quality and you and you show slightly looser stuff one day and they're like yeah, we really need to speed things up I'm like Man, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I just, just a little, just a small little. I just didn't. I had a bad day. Relax. No. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they give you that. They give you either bullet points if there is no script, or they give you the script to read through. And regardless of you're reading the script, they still ask you to work on certain parts. Sometimes if it's a blues like a blue sky or or a lot earlier, you know, what I do is I start in advance and I just feed them stuff I'm inspired by already. And and if that works out great, it gives me freedom to take control of what I want to work on. But a lot of the times is they they focus in. It's like, yeah, we really want to see these beats. We want to flesh these out. And uh and then they let you go and you work and and uh when it, when you're presenting you usually just turn it in and email it over or dropbox it or whatever and then you get feedback the following week or the following day depending when you're turning it in uh or later than that day and uh it's over a zoom call like like what we're doing right now and 
they run it through. But this one time, there was a unique experience where I don't know if I liked it or not. It was fun. Where they're like, yeah, we want it kind of, we want it like this and like that. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. Can you do that? Like, sure. Do that right now. Right now? Yeah. Okay, sure. And I sh I'm like, share your screen. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I went in and I, I started showing them how I'm painting and doing the image. And they're like, that's magic. You're you're so great. You're still, and, and and it felt nice to to get complimented while I'm doing the work. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. You. It's like those brushes you're doing. You know, I used to illustrate like you, Alex, but I stopped because I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> so what? So uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure uh, move move <clears throat> move the moon down a little. Move the moon down. All right. I scroll that. Not a little up up. Up, I'm like, dude. <laughs> Next time, I'm putting my foot down, and I'm saying, "Yeah, no, I, I gotta, uh, I can't work like this." Yeah. <laughs> but I bit my tongue. That that lasted for a bit until, um, actually, that was a project where they, uh, mid journeyed my art, and when I spoke up about that. After the after that, they stopped. They stopped putting me on Zoom calls where, where I worked. It's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, that's kind of that's an example, right? But let's say, you know, a company like Marvel Biz Dev, it's it's sort of the same thing, but way way more. Uh, organized as far as VizDev goes, um, where they, you know, either Ryan or Andy or whoever the supervisor is that I'll be uh, working with uh, will uh, give me the rundown of what the story is, the, the movie. And they want to start us off exploring ideas of what it will look like when Doctor Strange is traveling through. Uh, different realities so that's it that's all they have there's no script yet go and then you start to explore visuals that will be ultimately exciting to look at and feel like different reality planes being traveled to which is like uh you know that's entirely up to you to sort of get a feeling for and sense for you know it really leans heavy on that uh and then no deadline in sight we have tons of time to to work on 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 stuff and then eventually yeah so turn it in it's this thursday and just out of the blue this thursday from from like from tuesday it's like okay so thursday's a deadline so whatever you have turn it in and if you, and if you haven't been working It'll look bad on you. If you have if you've been messing around and like, eh, we have plenty of time. And you just have two pieces and a month has gone by. It looks bad. That's the thing about live action. I don't know how it is with animation. I don't know how relaxed it is in animation. Probably it's probably the same thing. I mean, it's all it's all production and, and money's on the line, but in live action. What I've noticed, this is, let's say, outside of Marvel, but Marvel as well. Uh, quality is a thing, but especially outside of Marvel, it's way more brutal. At least in, in VizDev, we're all kind of a kind of like a family there and everybody knows each other and they can give you a benefit of the doubt and like, hey, what's the matter, man? You having a bad day? Well, just, just go home, relax, come back and you'll do better, you know? That's, but Outside of that, the experience has been you mess up slightly on you, you turn in eight pieces, let's say, within a week and a half. And four pieces of those eight pieces are mediocre as hell. They lose interest in you. And it's it's 
it can be hard. This is Marvel? No, 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 no. I'm, this is outside. Like oh, when right, I've worked right. on different different shows when I was not at Marvel, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in between Marvel, it, it, they there, it's very, a lot more brutal, a lot more faster, you know. The time we take, for example, at Marvel, I don't know what it's like right now. I haven't been in Marvel for a bit since the, the last bits of the writer strike and all, but um, uh, at Marvel, you 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 have we we had integrity with with our art to to, to really think about and and feel the designs and think about story and how you can compose it it's fun it's fun even if even let's say if the story of this hero film is not so appealing even if the screenplay is not so good that's none of our business and it's it's whatever and we try our best to produce work that make it exciting so like there's time given for that, uh, I'd like to think, uh, a lot of the time. Sometimes not. But um, outside of that, there's no there's no breathing room like that. They tell you, make the dog jumping over a log. Make the dog look like he's smiling like a human being and look realistic. I get what he wants. He wants this. And then you explore this is what you truly wanted, right? No, that's not what I asked for. Uh, you're fired. That's very, that's a bit exaggerated, but that's kind of how it is outside of Marvel a lot of the times where it's like, they they got you on, they need you to kick ass, hit the ground running. If you don't, uh, they're gonna start looking at you as a. Uh, we should replace this guy soon, because they, <laughs> they they don't want they don't want to deplete the budget. I guess you know uh, it's a different mindset. I don't know. That was my experience personally, and I'm speaking from my experience where I dropped the ball here and there, where I was on a show and my ego got in the way, and I was like. Yeah, they asked me to make this image, but actually, I'm going to show them this. And it's not completely off, but it's, but I feel like it's better. And they're coming around and I'm all confident. I'm like, yeah, sure, here it is. And I'm looking at them like, <laughs> what, 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 what's this? Oh, oh well, it's uh, the thing with uh, that's, uh, Alex, what what have you been working on in the past week? This. That's not what I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh that's all my that's my own fault. But you learn you learn quickly. Uh but yeah. Um live action encompasses many things when you're working on a keyframe. A lot of the times they just want to see the set and how the characters are going to be playing out in, in the set. But I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to establish my work in a way where I get brought on to explore story, narrative, and, and mood for a live action. And and often do color beats and and uh, board things out in color beats and, and uh, that's really fun. That's exciting. That's actually more exciting to me than creating images for just for for set building. Because uh, as as exciting as that could be as well, I'm just less interested in that. I I think there's professionals and and brilliant artists that do that very well based on the art that uh, we do you know uh, narrative art and that's how it's going to be shot now we need to see that wall can you design that wall? that's that's great 
that being said, I've done both. I've, I've been asked to create sets and, and uh, that was a learning experience and it was cool. It came out, came out nice, I guess. But yeah. Anyway, not my thing. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I don't know what it's like for animation, but at the end of your, the end of the road, uh, they just tell you, like they give you a week or two in advance. I was like, so uh, that's it. Uh, the budget's ending. Uh, you got anything else going on for you? I'm like, no. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for all the great work. Okay. Yeah, and then you and you just leave. I maybe it's the exact same thing for animation. It's just I always imagined. I've never worked with a full animation team. I've worked with a small animation team several times. You know, I recently worked on an animation thing uh, with uh, Sam Mitchlap, who's a really dear, good friend, and and uh, he was sort of production designing this thing, and. So much freedom, and we explored so much, both through painting and through Blender, and do like doing color keys in Blender, through primitive shapes and just lighting things, moving cameras. And I, I still don't know what animation is like, but he was telling me that's what animation is like. That's what animation was like when we, when I was doing it back on Prince of Egypt. It was just like exploring. It was. It was searching and it was having fun. It was playing in the world you're in. I don't know what animation is like nowadays. Uh, again, I, I haven't been around it, but I fantasize that you have a bit more of a connected activity type of stuff and, and group activities and, and, and like a family closeness that's that's how it comes off a lot of the times when I see people posting about working on certain shows and what they did together and whatnot. Uh, very rarely do I see that with live action. It's very live action is just that that's more on maybe the the post production side when you see them wrapping up and they're like, "Who's a lot of." To work with all of you, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, how come concept artists never cry after work? <laughs> we just go home, <laughs> and we and we hope for the next best best thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I hope that was an interesting description of live action. It's like I don't, I probably didn't do a good justice, but um, no, it's. it's it's different every time, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I think um, probably animation is a little bit more chill, a little bit less cutthroat, I would say. Definitely different studios are different. Um, Sony is a little bit more cutthroat um, as opposed to uh, like Disney or DreamWorks. Um, Disney is very, very chill. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Like too, too chill for too me. Chill. <laughs> it's like it's it's hard to find time during the day to to do work because there's so many like activities. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's it's Bagel Monday. And then uh, then we have the trainer uh, for lunchtime, and then uh, then we're playing games in the afternoon. I'm like, I did no work today. Um, <laughs> Sony is like if you have a bad week, I, like someone's gonna talk to you and ask like, are you are you okay? Can we help you out? Like, uh, um, something the matter? I'm like, oh, I just had a bad week. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but Sony, um, so yeah, and and Sony like hires and fires per project too. Um, so usually it's in like three month increments. They're like, okay, we're gonna hire you for a few months. Things are going good. Extend you for another few months. Um, like they told me I'm, I'm good till, till the fall. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um, somewhere like DreamWorks or 
or Disney, they want to hold on to you forever. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess it, it, it depends on where you go. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it ultimately depends on where you go, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, all the story, the stories I said, I, I'm not trying to like, I hope it, it's not painting a bad image for a lot of that. It's, you know, it's kind of to be expected. It is a business and the, you, you, you are signing up for the dynamic of movie making, be it animation or, or live action or TV. The, the, the point of what I was trying to say, I guess, is if you, uh, if you're not on your A game, it's just going to show. And then certain people might take note, you know, it, and not like it. <laughs> So, and the whole point is that you're even getting paid that comfortable paycheck is because they're relying on you to perform to that high quality, you know? Yeah. I, I'd like to think so, unless that's a very naive way of looking at it. Maybe they just need to pay a certain amount so they don't get audited. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's maybe that's a, that's a different thing, but uh, yeah. Do you worry about, or do you, do you think about being successful? Like, it, is it a concern to you? Um, like, what does it, what does the word success mean to you? Oh man, uh, that's a good question. Success. For me, it's it's like, I don't I don't need a ton of money but i want enough money where i'm not stressed about it worried about it um i want to be paid well for for what i do hopefully um but when i'm when i'm old and i'm thinking back on my life um i want i want to be known for being a, a great painter and if i will consider myself successful if i know that i've tried my hardest to to do that i've done everything that i can throughout my life to to hone my craft and you know not take take my time for granted not not take this um take this life for granted i guess oh man you're doing what that very well i i think that's uh um it falls into line what you just said. It 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 is true. Uh, you know the the idea of success is when uh, when you are living comfortably and getting paid, doing what you love to do. Um, and I wanted to say that you are doing something successfully, executing your idea, telling the story to affect and it's it's getting the audience to feel a, a certain way that's success you know that's a in a way your art succeeding because you've done it successfully but in terms of like life the big the big picture of success is i think you you have you're getting paid doing exactly what you love to do i can't complain that that's it even if it's even if it's uh, slightly different to here and there you know times are slow whatever you get a job that uh, asks you to do something a little bit less narrative a bit more focused on vfx a bit more focused on side things not so much more of uh uh, main story driven or whatever you're still doing what you love to do you're still painting you're still designing and that's a great thing i think um uh, yeah that's that's an idea of success um and all the other sub sub ideas are also a matter of being uh, of what it means to be successful. Yeah. 
I, I mean, the, <clears throat> I'm also trying to backtrack and think, well, when I wasn't successful, what was happening in my life? And it's exactly that. I wasn't getting paid <laughs> at all. <laughs> and I was I wasn't doing what I was uh, what I was loving to do. So, you know, when you put the two and two together, that has to be it. And that's, you know, that's that feeling of being content. And you know, I've, <clears throat> it's not it's not happiness. Happiness is probably a, temporary stuff or or but it's more like it's more like you're you're feeling complete with what you're doing that's that that's something that lasts you know whereas happiness can be a mo momentary thing you know you met someone you met someone you love and now you're happy or you you met your hero and now and that made you happy or you had a coca-cola on on a hot day, you know, sometimes I associate happiness with success. And I think that's wrong. I guess that's why I'm talking about that. I think that's wrong. So says success has nothing to do with being happy. <laughs> but then the, I might just be, I haven't thought about that thoroughly. What I just said, sorry, I, I went off track. <laughs> It's it's, it's an, very easy talking to you, man. I, I sorry, I'm ranting sometimes. Uh, no, it's stuff. perfect. Um, yeah, something like life. If you're trying to just be happy through through life, you're gonna be unhappy. I think because a yeah. lot of people are like, "Oh, I just want to be happy," but like, there's so many things in life, struggles. There's you have to live a challenging life and through those challenges um, and accomplishing the things you want to accomplish, um, you will find, um, you'll find satisfaction, um, you know, like a sense of, of worth, um, achievement and, and growth, um, so I think it's better to chase those things rather than just happiness. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah, man. I I have a lot I have a few last last kind of fun questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um biggest career highlight. Oh man. Uh There's a couple. Um, one, unfortunately, ah, fuck. one I can't talk about, I just realized. Um, but the other is is uh, I getting to work with my wife uh, on the same show. Uh, she's working on the story aspects and I get to uh, through that same pipeline work on what she's developing with story and, and illustrating those things. And that, that's a high, that I've always had that as a dream, as a, I've always wanted for something like that to happen. And I, it's surreal that it's happening. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that is a highlight. I, I, th absolutely because there's so many things that have that have happened in terms of my career and you know i can say working getting to work with david finch or getting to work with a lot of directors that even the current director i'm working with right now is is incredibly surreal but i uh, can't say any but the um, but Fincher and Aronofsky were highlights for me, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, but not as this as the working with my wife definitely is is something great because I've always wanted to 
to do something like that, to do teamwork. We, I want us to work on personal projects together, you know, and we've planned stuff out for that, for the road ahead. But to, to work on a show together, that's, that's really crazy cool. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. I don't think it, it might not happen again. So I'm really taking um, everything very, uh, um, I'm not taking anything for granted is what I'm trying to say. Everything's very special. So that's cool. It might, it might not last long, but as long as they, they need me, uh, as long as I'm budgeted, whatever. It's just the, the fact that I get to do that for, for the time being is great. So that's a highlight. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be more to come in different ways. Maybe. Yeah. How about mm -hmm. yourself? Um, yeah, I think maybe three, three big ones come to mind when when spider-verse the first one came out um i'd worked on a couple movie movies before that but um that was the first movie that i worked on that actually came out and i remember that feeling like i did all the color keys for that first trailer and it was the first time like seeing my stuff like on on the screen and um uh, it's like man that's that's awesome and then the movie comes out and um turns out to be a great movie and uh everyone's like well your your career is all downhill from here <laughs> um, <laughs> i was like damn it <laughs> well you know it's funny uh i i felt another highlight for me was you know when i when i when avengers infinity war came out and we're like this is amazing and we watched it all together and then end game and this is so freaking crazy good and we're very happy we were part of it and someone was like this is as good as it gonna get it's not gonna get better than this i forgot who said that but i was <laughs> we we're out in front of a movie theater and uh so i was like yeah this is as good as it get i think i think this is the best it's ever gonna get it's like nah nah we could top that. It's going to be insanely hard to top, dude. I'm like, it, yeah, I guess. It it has been hard to top. Not, not to say that the, the rest of the stuff is uh, horrible, but it definitely is not uh, up to what uh, Infinity War and Endgame was. That that was something else. Uh, that was well, a highlight. That was, that, was, that was like movies building up to that for like over 10 years. Those are also great. Yeah. Yeah. Those are also cool. Yeah. Over 10 years, those films were built. Yeah. That's crazy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, another highlight for me was um, getting that the email from Disney recruiting. Um, mm -hmm. It was always like, like, oh, I'd never be able to work at, at Disney or whatever. And, and yeah, they, they, they hit me up um so getting to work there and like walking through the halls and seeing so much history um, i get i i i you're bringing back memories i think on the first day when ryan called me up for, to work at marvel i i ran laps afterwards i was so excited like i can't believe i got to work like so it's like a child yeah out of some anime show i was like <laughs> It's so silly, but yeah, that was definitely a highlight, a career highlight. Mm -hmm. I I guess I was taking your question as like a current career highlight, but in general, yeah, there's a lot. There's there's so many that I can list out for sure. Um, but that's funny what you mentioned, Disney. Just totally, to that reminds me of 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 the same thing with with Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, uh dice to um you, you know him right yeah yeah when uh i'm not someone who gets like like starstruck or like fanboy really um but dice is someone who's um i 
I just respect him as an as an artist and as a person uh so much and um getting to work with him um and it was it was like just me and him too like we were early on on a project and um like it's surreal like he'd be like he's like you want to have a have a quick zoom call and um later today i'm like yeah i'm like sitting talking with him and he's like telling me like launching me on an assignment um and he's like the most like kind-hearted just i've never felt i think i felt the most like respected as an artist working for him because sometimes you get hired onto something and you kind of question like why did they hire me for this? Like they mm -hmm. could have hired someone better to do this. Um, but like with Dice, he's, he's always like, um, you know, I want, I want um, your unique taste on this. I want, I want you to just paint how you paint, like however you want to do it. Um, so I could just be myself and create. And um, yeah, he's, he's just an amazing uh, leader because he's been an artist for so long and now he's directing stuff. So he knows how, how to get the most out of artists. Um, so yeah, I would say that's, that's one awesome. Of the, one of the highlights. Yeah. That's great. I, um, I feel like there's also tiny highlights <laughs> i mean working with working with those big guys is is really really good and and uh very defining for your career and that's very important uh, and working with the people you love is is amazing too but then there's just i worked on this movie called call of the wild it's with harrison ford and i don't it doesn't matter if the movie did bad or good <laughs> if it did well or not yeah but on that film i worked with a, a, a group of artists that came and went and working with those guys was i, I got to work uh, i know that i worked with justin sweet on at marvel but i got to also work with him there and it was a bit of a closer sort of painting relationship uh even though he he left shortly after for on the lion to go work on lion king but i uh being there and then that's when i met sam mishlap because that film production had a round two and working with sam over uh on on call of the wild it's not so much that oh it was incredible the the movie and no sam and i every day laughed our asses off about random jokes we would we sat right next to each other we could not stop laughing every day it was from the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon we'd get our work done and then we would just crack jokes inside jokes about movies and whatnot I, i'm surprised we didn't get fired we were it, it it that lasted for about a year a year and a half <laughs> and it was the one of the best experiences working on it on a on a live action film that uh, we really didn't care if it was going to be made or not it yeah. was the group it was that it was that camaraderie of creating art together and just man uh, laughing our asses off that's all i remember is just laughing our asses off so in a way that's kind of like a highlight <laughs> that's awesome it was, it was uh that was great mm -hmm. a, a great work environment is very important i think and uh, we produce good work because of that even though the film was sort of uh uh it was there was a lot of 
negative and pe- toxic energy fuel behind it. A lot of comp- competition between costume designers and, and uh, production designers and who, who gets what, you know. Hmm. So we sort of bypass that by being in our own little corner laughing. Yeah. yeah that was That was cool. Are you a night person person or morning person? Uh, I I like to think both. I think I'm 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 a morning person. I really enjoy waking up early. I I, I like to walk. I walk my dog early in the morning, and then I. The shower fuels me with. It's like a deprivation chamber and it fuels me with ideas and then when i sit i make the beginnings of very confident ideas of art the nighttime art making is is i'm too tired to to make solid looking stuff but i but if i had started it in the morning I can rest assured that it'll it'll carry through into the night. But now, if I start to work in the evening, I need to remind myself never to post it in the evening. If I if it's for something to share, because it'll look like crap in the morning. So at night, I I I I start it and in the morning. I continue it and finish it if anything. Mm-hmm. However, at night I make the best music. It's when mm-hmm. I'm half awake when the best music comes out and that's that's the core of the idea a lot of the times speaking personal work when it's for clients I sometimes they don't have choice if i have to crunch and they need to see something for tomorrow i will work in the night fully focused with a cup of coffee in the hand i know it's unhealthy but i do it that's different and uh for for, for client work I'm a morning person for personal work. It's sort of whenever, but uh, yeah, both both ways worked together. So, yeah. Do you do you take breaks when you're working, or do you find yourself locked into your room working all day, and you forget you forget basic responsibilities like. Uh, I have to eat. Uh, I should probably uh, sweep the backyard a little bit because there's branches after the rain, stuff yeah. like that. Or do you, or do you actually get off the computer and and do stuff outside? Because I feel like I get trapped in my office, and uh, I, uh, it's not good. It's not healthy. It's to the point where. I lost a routine that I I'm now trying to get back into, which is working out more regularly. I I I'm you know I walk my dog in the morning is not good enough. I need to get back. Something I admire about you, man. You post your stuff and your health routine and working out, and it makes me feel embarrassed because I'm like, God, dude, I need to I need to get my act together, otherwise. It's not about the self. It's not so much about a self image, even though that's a great bonus. It's more like, you know, I'm not I'm not vain or anything. I don't I don't care if I look good or not, uh, obviously. But I, uh, I, I, I feel like I'm going to pay the price with health, and that's going to be bad. You know, if, if if when I'm when I hit fifty, I have health problems because I've been sitting on my ass just painting that's not good that's then all of this is almost not worth it because now you've worked your entire life to to pay medical bills and what what the hell's the point of that so i gotta get back into that anyway sorry to trail off but um yeah i i work i i know that i will do better work if i take breaks um because I noodle, like I, I do something. Um, and then if I'm looking at it for more than a couple hours, I, I start noodling. You, your eyes kind of get like, 
um, used to what you're looking at. So I know if I take a 10 minute break, 15 minute break, come back to it, I'll be able to like just put down a few strokes, fix it, and then move on to the next one. But I'm so bad at like actually doing that. Um, I, I think I'm like you, I lock myself in my room. I forget about my responsibilities. Um, I'll just kind of eat snacks all day. <laughs> That's like, the worst. Like, well, <laughs> like healthy snacks. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not very healthy with snacks. <laughs> um, because I don't want to take the time to like go make a big lunch or something. Right. Um, so I, I do stuff like that. Like I need to change my, my cat's litter right now. Like, um, but yeah, I'm going to try to maybe set a timer every hour and a half, just take a quick little break. Um, yeah. So thank you for bringing that up. That, that'll be. No, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I need to do that too. The timer is such a logical and simple idea. I don't know why I never think of that. It's I, I feel like I, I know it in the back of my mind. Like, dude, all you have to do is set your phone to mm -hmm. beep. And that'll tell you to get up, but I purposely probably don't do it because I feel like I, I feel so comfortable in my zone, but it's not good. Yeah. It's, it's we bought a house and there's so much stuff to do around the house, for example, and I'm just locking myself in my office. My, my house might as well just be my office. It's it's so stupid that I don't. I, Listen, I, I've I have been getting better about it, but there was a period where I was really bad. Like I was just I I had disappeared from from the existence of <laughs> my wife's like, I don't even know where you are. It's like I'm in my office. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> uh but yeah. Um that's that's very important. I actually I was thinking about that earlier, just thinking about how uh, valuable it is to live your life regardless of whether you're a great artist in a career, with a career or not, you know? Uh, live your life loving loving yourself and loving the environment that you live in. It's so easy to forget about that, but it's, but actually I find every time I do that for myself, uh, it improves my work tremendously. Um, whether it's being outside or, or removing myself from doing any painting or art for a, for a while. And when I say a while, I'm saying like a week or two where I'm just like, I'm not doing anything. And that hasn't happened in a bit, but I know when it used to, when I come back, I was, I was hungry. I was starving to produce and I produce even better and more uh, interesting work. Um, I guess that's because in the time off, I, away from, from my work, I've been spending it fueling myself and thinking and absorbing and uh, reading stuff and learning you know so that balance is very necessary and i just have a bad habit of uh, forgetting about the balance so i have to work on that yeah i i definitely need to as well do you have a workout routine do you do you work out every day or um yeah I well right now it's a little little messed up, but generally I'll be I'll work out five days a week. Um so just after my work day, every day, um I go and go to the gym and I look forward to it all day because it's like time when I, I can just put on my headphones. I don't have to worry about anything. I, I'm thinking about like what muscle groups I'm gonna hit today and um uh yeah just going to the gym being in the zone just breaking a sweat um making like little little progress um you know oh i lifted that much um 
that much more uh, this week than I did uh, last month or something. Um, and it started out of pain I was having um, in my neck and shoulders and, and wrist because I was I, on one project, they're really busy and I was just at my desk for, I don't know, like, like all day, all weekend. Um, and my muscles like atrophied. Um, cause when you're just in this, in this pose all day. So I was like, I need to, I need to fix this. Um, I started strengthening my muscles and then, um, I was like, oh, I can, you know, I can like actually like put on some, some decent muscle and feel better about myself. And, uh, you know, I doing things like going for a hike or like moving something heavy. I, I felt like, like a superhero or someone was like, Oh, this is easy to lift now. Um, so like, that was, that was really cool. Um, so that, that was like motivating for me. And then from that point on, I was like, I'm just, you know, I've, I've kind of found a routine for myself. I can, I found a diet that's sustainable. The diet's the hard part. Cause I'm a, I have a very small appetite. So um, I have to like force myself to to eat enough to like maintain um, some some muscle. But I found like a um, a diet that that I can maintain. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Um, Because yeah, it's 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 necessary to have in my life now, uh, mentally. Um, and you know, when you get older, your, your muscles kind of atrophy. And so if you're not doing something right. to, to train them, to push them, um, consistently, that's when you will fall and hurt yourself or. That's right. Uh, that's a hundred percent sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. I got to, I really got to, that, those are, there's, there's two goals for, for me is, uh, uh, get in the habit of writing more and, uh, work out, damn it. Just work out simple workouts. Start, start simple. I'm just telling this to myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Get get your wife to go with you, so you both she, motivate she, each other. She works out every day. She oh, is a motivation. She's a motivation already. I mm. I'm I have a bad carry. I have a bad side of me. I have a I have a procrastinatory whatever that that's not a word, but like I <laughs> I just I kind of I I look at him like yeah I'll work out later, and I never do because I get caught up in a phone call. I start work. I get busy with the day and then I gotta, I just gotta, I feel like if I introduce that and make it a mandatory balance, not only will I end up loving it again, because there was a time my wife and I, we were doing a uh, CrossFit together and we would work out together and I was addicted to it. And, and then it sort of, I faded away from it because of work. Uh, and I started feeling comfortable not doing it. You know, it's very easy because because workout kicks your ass and it's not a pleasant thing. Not many people like working out. I think I'm one of them of where it's it's very intense and like, God, that hurts. But there's there's a type of workout that I can do that is enjoyable. And I'm not saying just weak, mindless, meaningless stuff. But uh, uh, types of routines, whether it's uh, uh, maybe not lifting so heavy, maybe uh, I I do love hiking and I do love steep inclines and and all that. So that's that's something I used to love swimming, but there's nowhere to swim for us right now. But I used to swim a lot, uh, and um. Yeah, do, doing deadlifts. I love I love doing uh, uh, ring pulls. We have we have a gym in our garage area in the back, and we've I've set it up so you do these 
uh, ring pull-ups. That's one of some of my favorite stuff to do. And, and I, I kind of want to get a rowing. What, I don't know what those, I guess it's a rowing machine. Mm -hmm. That's what I love yeah. the rowing machine that that works out almost everything yeah. on your body. It's so good. Uh, I want to get something like that, something compact. I don't know if those exist, but yeah, there's something. Either, either that or paying for a gym membership, which could be a thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could always do like a like a trial, see if sometimes it's nice to get away from your house. So then you, that's true. You're like, okay, now my mind is at the gym, and I can just focus here. Um, for me, it's hard to to work out in my in my home yeah i don't know just something about like my computer's right there yeah right right yeah very just it can be distracting you're right anything in the future you're looking forward to um could be work related or non-work related um Really looking forward to sharing the work I get to do with uh, my wife. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really look really look forward to uh, talking about what I'm working on right now. I mean, I guess, I guess after you, after we're done, I could tell you off the recording, but I just can't leak it on what I'm working on right now. But it's it's very. That's something. I never ever ever imagine I'd get a chance to to work on something like this. Uh that's why it's also a highlight. Um that's in terms of work and especially personal work as well. I just want to is to build up oh uh, more on my uh, portfolio so to speak with more shorts, more movies. I eventually kind of want to try and see if there's a avenue a road of where i can submit shorts is in a contest I, i'm not much of a contest i don't like art being judged like that but uh, I don't, i'm not much of a contest guy so but it, it it is a nice way to get exposure but so is youtube so maybe there's ways to do it through that by by myself so um I look forward to releasing uh, Gumroad videos, tutorials. I have been working on that. I was working on starting to work on on books to release, but I put that on hold because it it's a lot more it's a lot more draining than I thought, and I that's why I've been working more on movies and and the Gumroad stuff. Uh, In informative books or like. Like More the story, like just just book of my art, cool. that type of stuff, like paintings and, uh, but, um, and this uh, later this year, we we have a trip planned to Japan, kind of looking forward to that. I've never been, so that's gonna be great. Um, I bet there's a lot more or something that I'm missing, but those are, those are the things that I think about a lot. Yeah. So. And Japan is going to be cool. I went for the first time, um, last year and, um, yeah, the culture it's just totally different, especially coming from LA, where it's like ah, kind of kind of an attitude where a lot of people are like looking out for themselves, like um, you know, um, uh, right, kind of rude. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, you you go to get coffee at the coffee shop, and like it's you know it's it's not. The, the people aren't maybe the nicest like yeah and you Japan. wonder if you have problems with like socializing you're like dude yeah. do I, am i do people not like talking to me no dude it's just you're in la 
Yeah. You, that's all. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> like it it almost brought me to tears when I got coffee in uh Japan. Like uh they they knew like I couldn't speak or anything and like a girl came over and she was like um she was like helping me out. She was like, Oh, do you want this, this? Like she came around to where to where I was standing and like made sure I could could get what I wanted. That's I like, awesome. I was like, this is the nicest thing anyone has ever done. Like, what the heck? Like wow. I'm a total stranger. And she was so like her voice was like nice and calm and like, wow, this is a beautiful experience. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, that's exciting. I definitely want to see that culture, uh, experience it. Um yeah, I'm excited to see. I, I'm excited to be there and, and take take photos, take shots. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another thing. You, I've seen you post. You're doing a lot of photography as of as of recent. How do you? Uh, uh, have you always done that, or, or did you start? And also, uh, what camera do you use? Do you just do use iPhone, or do you use a, an actual camera? Or yeah, I, I started in. I think I took a photo class in high school. Um, so oh, we cool. had like the dark room and and all of that. Um, so so we did that and we also did digital. So I think I I started to um yeah, that really like opened my eyes to that and realized like I could be an artist um in a different way, like just going around and trying to find like cool shots and interesting interesting moments um right so i've kept that going since since high school um most of the photos i take are with my iphone it's um it's pretty old iphone 7 that's still working um and then i have i have this like little kid toy camera what <laughs> this what takes it um i can i can post the link to it it's like 30 bucks on amazon or something but you know like nice digital cameras they or like the new iphones they capture everything like there's full detail in the shadows it like lightens the shadows um full detail in the lights right where these cheap cameras i have a couple different ones um one's like a digital polaroid um these these cheap cameras or these old digital cameras they kind of do what you would do as a painter where you'd like simplify the darks no or you simplify the lights that's amazing yeah so it's like doing a film thing mm -hmm. kind of it crush it flattens and crushes that's really cool yeah sometimes they'll change turn the whole um scene blue or the whole scene red because it it senses that it's like um it's generally warm so it'll just like do something weird like that wow yeah that's really cool yeah but yeah i'll, I'll post i'll post a link awesome yeah what's the what's the brand it's a nikon you said or um one is polaroid oh, polaroid. Um, oh okay probably google like digital polaroid oh okay um, and then I have no idea what this this brand is. It's just like a, it's literally like a kid's toy camera. <laughs> okay. And it looks awesome. ridiculous in like my big hand, but it's. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. Nice. And last question I have, I think you kind of already answered this, but if there's anything you want to add, like what does your dream project look like? look like to you um subject matter genre medium oh wow uh yeah I, I guess i talked a little bit about it but uh yeah working on my person like on 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 short movies and uh working on stories together with my wife outside of client work you know working together on stuff but uh that that is it it's really 
it's just really fun to make. It's been really fun making movies. Um, I'm obsessed about it. And it's gotten me to w watch old films even more so. I stopped for a bit. I stopped watching movies, but now I've been diving back in and I found sources on YouTube. I mean, not that I found sources, but, you know, looking at old sources that talk about, you know, the breakdowns of films or like the Roger Deakins podcast where he talks about cinematography, diving back into that and, and listening to their take and the making of these different types of films and um uh it's just making me apply it to my blender stuff and even going out and shooting stuff uh like real footage and editing it together or just creating isolated stuff just making short films and applying my knowledge of painting to those shots to those images and editing and making music for it um that entire process also the fun of it all makes your painting better taking photos makes your painting better like you it's like a back and forth type of effect like you 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 work on you work on blender for a bit or you you take some time and you go you travel or you go out and you spend a week just devoting yourself waking up in the morning and taking photos when you're done with that you you've it's it's like not only is there a break away from painting but you've accumulated a different way of looking at images um that it's it, it, in a way it almost speeds up your painting it minimalizes the decision making in a way like when when i'm when i've worked in blender for a while when i go back into painting i know exactly what i need and what i don't need to paint even more so as opposed to painting a bunch of stuff and then like oh, i could edit all this out right off the bat i could tell what i need in it and there's almost no editing if that makes sense. It's interesting uh, working with different tools like that. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's, that's been exciting. So uh, yeah, that, that is my, as far as a dream pro project, the specific dream project, you know, I don't have a name for it or anything, but it's just continuing what I'm doing now, just making more shorts because I'm not going to, stop i don't think there's an end to it for me yeah that's and, awesome and may, maybe from that something will grow something even bigger that i won't expect it you know but yeah yeah, yeah see where it takes you yeah dude awesome um i will um I'll grab all your all your links, social media, classes, all that stuff. I'll post oh, okay. it in the so everyone can can find you. Um, okay. Yeah. Any other any other thoughts or anything? Oh man, it's just been so nice uh, talking to you. Thank you for uh for having me on. It's actually kind of inspiring. I I told my wife that Zach's gonna have me on his podcast, and she's like, "Oh, that's so cool." we should get back into our podcast as well. I'm like, yeah, it, it's, it, it sort of inspired us to continue that. Cause we had something started. I only, I think we only have two episodes, but uh, we've had plenty of time to, to think and think about how to go about it in the future for a podcast. So it's, it's really cool. I think to see, you doing this because you're coming from from your own fresh unique angle and you you've already done these great episodes with these brilliant artists and every episode sort of has been uh, uh, very refreshing very unique you you allow 
for so much conversation to happen and it's you know it just feels like a i don't it feels weird to be saying this because it it i'm not trying to analyze it because i forgot i was on a podcast i thought i was just ch chatting with you i seriously it's it's a great podcast man thank you and uh um i really really appreciate it and i hope uh, we can uh, catch up again sometime in the future or 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 work together or hang out or whatever i know you're you're not in california right now right you're no but i'll i'll come back and visit yeah, yeah. so yeah maybe we can catch coffee or something i don't know yeah definitely and and thank you yeah um you know these are the conversations that i would want to have um either way and um i figured i should i should just record some of them and put them up because yeah, they help me so much like after talking with you i'm like so inspired i'm kind of like i didn't have the greatest like art week but now i feel better and i'm like you know we're we're all artists trying to figure this out and yeah absolutely yeah so yeah i mean thank you so much for for the thank time you. Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. Yeah.